on in. It's Monday here, big breakfast, and they've asked us to open the door now. It's freezing. Uh, but we're not going to actually do that <laughs> because it's very cold outside. So we'll stay in here while Rob's outside with Val and the rest of the crew. And they can get cold. Uh, uh, yes, it's um, it's the 294th day of 1992, which means there are just 72 left and 66 to Christmas. Today's also Thanks the day. That. No, we it's don't. It's all right. Oh, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, um, and also, that's uh, well, it's also the day that MPs go back to work. Stay there. OK, what's on the show, Gab? Coming up this morning, we've got sorry. Master Blaster in the Crunch with Zig and Zag and new computer games, Snap, Cackle and Pop, and Bob Geldof will be chatting to Nelson Mandela, well, and I will be talking to the man who met Michael Heseltine on Saturday. OK, minor. it's Music Down, Snap, Cackle and Pop, and uh, we have Master Blaster today in the Crunch with Zig and Zag, that? as always. Sorry. Now oh, it's time to go it? over to the news with Peter Smith. It's Monday. Good morning. These are the headlines. Cabinet in crisis over pit backlash. More London bomb blasts and a man accused over child murder. John Major is holding an emergency cabinet meeting this morning over the mounting protests against the pit closures. The Prime Minister faces a rebellion from Tory backbenchers and may be forced to back down to avoid a Commons defeat when MPs vote on the coal crisis. There have been angry scenes at Silver Hill Colliery in Nottinghamshire this morning after management stopped miners from going back to work. About 100 men tried to enter the pit where union boss Roy Link is staging an underground sit-in. Two bombs exploded in London overnight. The first went off shortly before 1 o'clock outside a hotel in Hammersmith, West London. No one was hurt. The second bomb exploded half an hour later under a car near Piccadilly Circus in the West End. No one was injured, but nearby buildings and cars were damaged. A man will appear in court today charged with murdering seven-year-old Nicky Allen in Sunderland. 23-year-old George Heron lived in the same flats as Nicky and extra security will surround his court appearance. Children up for adoption could soon have a say in who their new parents should be. Courts may have to put the rights of children before the needs of would-be parents. The plans are part of sweeping reforms to be announced by Health Minister Tim Yeo today. Dirty Den could soon be back in Albert Square. The Sun says that the BBC has offered actor Leslie Grantham £100,000 to return to EastEnders as pub manager Dennis Watts. Dirty Den was killed off in 1989, but now scriptwriters have decided the body found in a canal wasn't his. Tourists are flocking to the resort of Hermanus in South Africa to see schools of whales. Top attraction is a 50-foot southern right whale and her albino calf. Fifty years ago, these whales were near extinction, but now they're thriving thanks to a ban on hunting them. A nun who took a vow of poverty has won a million dollars in a TV lottery. Sister Josephine Contras will use the money to build a retirement home for nuns near San Francisco. Liverpool's Ian Rush has entered the record books as the highest goal scorer for the club. Rush recorded his 287th goal against Manchester United to put Liverpool two up at half-time. But Mark Hughes pulled United back, first with a cunning lob. Then with a spectacular diving header in injury time. In golf, England defeated Scotland at St Andrews in the final day of the Alfred Dunhill Cup. On a bitingly cold day, England's David Guilford beat Scotland's Stanley Lyle by three shots in the crucial match of the clash. Now look at today's weather. A cloudy day with rain at times across most of the country, but it will turn brighter later, especially in central and southern parts of England. Temperatures will range between 7 centigrade, 45 Fahrenheit, and 11 centigrade, 52 Fahrenheit. The chances of rain, 40% in Newcastle, 50% in Manchester, 70% in Cardiff and London, 80% in Aberdeen, and 90% in Glasgow, Belfast, Southampton, and Plymouth. And there will be sleet and snow in northern Scotland. Well, that's the news and weather at 7.04. Back to Chris and Gabby. Thank you very much, Peter. It's four minutes past seven. It is Monday, and it is the 2019th of October, <laughs> uh, 1992. Good morning to the girls. Hello, girls. Hello. Oh, very quiet, that. <laughs> uh, good morning Monday. to the boys. Hello, boys. Hello. Hello. Today is National Fire Safety Week. It's the beginning of National Fire Safety Week. And in America, it's Dental Hygiene Week this week. And also, today is Reevaluate Your Life Day in America. Oh, OK. How do you do that? You sit down, you think. OK, thanks, Gab. Um, <laughs> we've, got some, we've got some stuff for you happening on the phones and the faxes today. 081-985-1111, phone calls, 081-985-222. We want your messages to your MPs who go back to Parliament today and also... Yeah, we also want to know what the weather like is like in your area, because we hear from Peter all the time, but we actually want to know what the weather like is like in your area. Also, if you saw EastEnders yesterday, I missed it this weekend and last week. I want to know what happened in EastEnders, so somebody tell me. Why I'm addicted, did, why, why I'm did sorry. You miss it? 
I'm sad. It's not because I was away. Where did you go? I'm not telling. You're, you're a Disney. <laughs> Can I tell them the joke about the kitchen in your Disney? Go on, then. Apparently, the kitchens in your Disney have been closed down. Why? 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 Because they found mice this big in there. <laughs> <laughs> OK, yes, we've got some birthdays today for you. Um, it's Sunita's birthday today, and she is... Ooh. 26 wow. years old today. She's 12. Not. She's 26. Uh, John Le Carre's birthday today, one of my favourite writers, John Le Carre, <laughs> and he's 61 today. And somebody else has got another birthday. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. We've got some more photos for you now. Uh, it, they start a new programme today called Family Affairs, and they are Karen and... Oh, nice. Gloria. Gloria. Oh, nice. Oh, See ya. That's what it is. <laughs> and uh, also, Normski's back on telly tonight <laughs> with Dance Energy, respect is due. And also, tonight on TV, a film for your Halloween's on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and it really is on tonight. Ooh. Oh, Should I go over there now? Yeah, we've got a the the new family of the week. Gabby's going to introduce us here. to the family of the week. Here they yes, are. the family of the week. Come on, let's hear it for them, please. <laughs> they are the chapels from Fish Ponds. Yes. Is that right? In Bristol. Fish Ponds in Bristol. Right. If you could please introduce yourselves going that way around. Dad first. I'm here, Ian Chapman. I'm Lynn, Mum. I'm Bobby. I'm Jerry. I'm Scott. Right, well, you carry on with your breakfast because now we're going to have a look at where they live. <laughs> This is the Chapel Madhouse here in Bristol. Hello, my name's Lynn. I'm married to Ian. I'm the mother of three children, and I work full-time for a finance company. I met Ian when he was delivering uh, milk, and um, I thought he was quite a dishy milkman, actually. Very handsome. Most of the time, Ian's quite jovial, but uh, he has his moments and uh, sulks terribly for weeks on end. Hi, I'm Ian Chapel. I've been married to Lynn for 12 years, and I work at Safeways in Bristol, where I'm a foreman. Lynn's extrovert, fun-loving, happy-go-lucky. We fight like cat and dog, but it keeps the marriage interesting. Lynn has got a bad temper. I think I upset her the other week. I ended up with a chicken landed on the back of my head. Hello, my name is Bobby Chappell. I am 12 years old, and I go to Whitfield School in Bristol. My brother Jeremy, we get on sometimes, but when he torments me, I go for him. Sometimes, me and Scott, we fight. And um, he calls me names like Fatty, Chinese, but we get on half the time. And it's quite fun when we get on with each other. Hi, my name's Scott Chappell, and I'm seven years old, and I go to Dr. Bell's school. My brother Bobby is a bully, and we always fight over lots of different things. My brother Jeremy is kind because sometimes he helps me clean up my room, and sometimes we fight. Hello, my name is Jeremy, I'm age 10 and I go to Chester Park Junior School. Me and Bobby always fight because he's always nicking my stuff. Sometimes he's funny, but sometimes he really gets on my nerves. Scott is, well, a pain in the neck sometimes, but he can play games with us. I'd rather have two sisters and two brothers. As a family, we, we have our ups and downs like any other family, um, but on the whole, we, we get on quite well. It's brilliant when you see their reaction. He's going, oh, my voice, and his wobbling stomach, and also catapults. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Now, how come you uh, got the time off school? Yeah, be on this program, isn't it? But is school still going? Have you got a holiday or something? No, school's still on. So when's your half term? Um, next week. So you've actually got two weeks holiday. Mm. It's all right for some, isn't it? And how about you, Ian? I took uh, last five days holiday. So you also? Yeah. You took this as a holiday? Yeah. They must be mad. <laughs> now the time at 7.09, it's time for Dennis. Now, George, I'm sure once you visit the health club, you'll be glad I bought you a membership. Martha, this whole thing is ridiculous. I happen to be in perfect shape. Uh, help me, Martha. I'm stuck. Thanks. Believe me, you'll feel lots better once you get rid of those annoying 50 pounds. Are you talking about my stomach or Dennis? Did he call me Mr. Wilson? Dennis? What are you doing back there? Now, George, he asked if he could come along, and I just couldn't say no. I could. <laughs> I'm really exhausted. What a workout. But, Mr. Wilson, all you did was put on your sneakers. <sighs> I know. Uh, you must be Mr. Wilson. Welcome to the New Wave Spa. 
Sorry about the grip. I guess I don't know my own strength. Hey, don't you hurt my friend. <laughs> Cute kid. What a bet. Dennis, here's a half dollar. Why don't you buy yourself something at the snack bar? Gee, thanks, Mr. Wilson. What's in here? Yuck, a giant bathtub. I bet Mr. Wilson would love to relax in here after his workout. I'll fix it up real nice for him with this bubble bath. Hi, Mr. Wilson. What's that you're doing? <laughs> it's called jogging. I've got to do it for a whole mile. I'll speed it up for you, so it won't seem so far. No, Dennis, no, stop it, Dennis! Turn it off! Whatever you say, Mr. Wilson. 103, 104, oh! Huh? What? Oh, no! <laughs> this time I'm putting you in something you can't get out of. Sorry about that. Oh, that boy. Now, don't stop until I tell you. All right, whatever you say. Hi, Mr. Wilson. I used that money you gave me to buy you your favorite drink. A nice, cool lemonade. That's nice of you, Dennis, but I'll have it later. The ice will be all melted later. You'd better drink it now. But, 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 Dennis! There! I don't think the guy stirred the sugar enough. Don't worry. This ought to do it for you. Dennis! Stop! Stop doing things for you? No way, Mr. Wilson. After all, what are best friends for? <laughs> Terribly sorry. Are you all right? I was until you and that little brat showed up. Here, let me help you. If anyone wants me, I'll be recuperating in the jacuzzi. Gosh, Mr. Wilson, you could hurt yourself lifting a heavy thing like that. It weighs 200 pounds. 200 pounds? That's right. Ow! Ow! Oh! Ouch! See what I mean about hurting yourself? Ah, I can't wait to dunk my battered body in that warm, bubbling jacuzzi. Who put the soap in that jacuzzi? Believe me, Mr. Wilson, you'll feel lots better after a nice, warm bubble bath. Bubble bath? Sure, I put the soap in myself. Here we have your membership card in the health spa. Observe closely. Here. Well, here's what you can do with it. That's telling him, Mr. Wilson. Wow, it sure is nice of you to treat me to this hot fudge sundae, Mr. Wilson. It's the least I can do, Dennis. Thanks to you, I'll never have to go back to that spa again. Here, you'd better take this. I'm trying to lose weight. <laughs> 7 14, and you're watching the big breakfast. We've actually just had our first Christmas picture in here from Emma Burkett from Carlisle. A lovely Christmas picture. It's not Christmas yet. Well, how many days is it till Christmas, you said? 66. 66. Well, thank you very much. We'll put it on the pin board. We've had a, we've had a phone call. Have we? Hey, yeah, and it says, Ali, Alison from Burke Hempstead, Hertfordshire, is 16 today, and that's our only phone call so far. So those lines are free and open. 081 985 1111. 081 985 1111. We want to know how cold it is near you. Yes, weather. Just cold weather messages, please. Uh, coming up, on The Big Breakfast, your chance to win a day out next Monday, well, in fact, a couple of days, you and your family, you get to dress up as Hook and be in this big parade, and your mum and dad get to stay in this big, swanky hotel, four-star hotel, free next Monday, coming up in the crunch on this show. 
And also coming up, John Bon Jovi's new haircut, if you haven't seen it. That's in Snap, Cackle and Pop, and he looks good. OK, the question about the clip is, what finally happens to Robin Williams? But remember... Don't fall, it's just for fun. There's only one person that has that smell. Smell. The smell of someone who's ridden the back of the wind, Peter. The smell of a hundred fun summers of sleeping in trees, adventures with Indians and pirates. Oh, remember, Peter? The world was ours. We could do everything or nothing. All I had to be was anything, because it was always us. Oh, no. It finally happened. This one, folks, Alpen. A L P E N. A. It's for appetite appeal. L. For lots of crispy wheat flakes and some blessed raisins. B. It's for the pleasure of taste and texture. E. For every oat flake. Yum. And in for them, their hazelnuts. A L P E N. Why, thank you, ma'am. Maybe if people had a better start, they wouldn't turn out so bad. I used to have a watch, oh, years ago now. It glowed in the dark. <laughs> Very useful when I was courting my young lady. Nowadays, I have to find a street lamp to see the time. Of course. It's like, OK, well, I'm here with a new family of the week from Fish Ponds in Bristol. And um, Ian, I'm terribly sorry. And I know you're nice and warm in here, but get your jacket on. Um, Liz, have we got? Thank you. Can we have the spade, Liz? Oh, yes. Right. Um, you thought you could be nice and warm. It is cold here. I but we'd nice like you again. to dig um, a garden pond. Oh, that's us. very nice of you. I'll go and uh, start that one. Okay. That was very good. He looked surprised though. He actually knew that that was going to happen. Don't forget your jacket. I've got another one. It's cold outside. Lynn, excuse me. I'm going to take your seat now. I'm going to come over here. Right. What's he really like at all this DIY stuff? Um, well, I, I should imagine the pond would be all right for anything indoors. So we'll just leave him outside? Yeah, we? I'd leave him out, outside all, all week. <laughs> all week? <laughs> oh, she's cruel, she's cruel. We'll find out more about uh, him with you later on, OK? Right. But first of all, it's now time for Zig and Zag upstairs with the crunch. <laughs> oh, look at oh, the wow. Freezing. Oh, really? That cold? <laughs> um, are you rich? Um, nah. Everybody that lives in Jersey's rich, aren't they, I thought? And they speak French, yeah. Do they? Yeah. All oh, right, <laughs> good. OK, so you've got an uh, ID, ID a famous person. Uh, Scott's got the first clue. Go on, Scott, what is it? Where's the whistle? It's a whistle. Can you hang that out? It's a whistle. And I'll give you a clue. It's a sports person. <laughs> um... A whistle. <laughs> sports person? Whistle? Whistle. Oops, yeah. blimey. It's uh, so a whistle that doesn't hang up. That's an extra clue. <laughs> no, it's not really. Go on, guess. Um, I've no idea. I'm sorry. OK, well, thanks for calling from Jersey anyway. We're going to line two. Hello, line two. Hello. On my Oscar phone. Hello, Oscar. Who's this calling? It's Steve from Lem in Cheshire. OK, how's Lynn today? It's, uh, it's fine, Chris. You know, I come from Warrington. I know you do. I, I read that in the, in the paper over the weekend. Oh, that's a little bit. What, in the Warrington Guardian? Uh, no, in the it's in News of the World. Oh, uh, blimey, yes, I'm that I'm, famous I'm nowadays. No a longer a local mobile DJ it. around that, those parts, like I was yeah. at the Red Lion on Bridge Street. Anyway, this is a very colloquial conversation, which we'll stop now. And I have clue number two. Hello, Lynn. Hello. And it's a trainer. It's a trainer, so we've got a whistle and a trainer. What do you think? Is, um... Go on. Steve Ovett. Steve Ovett, good guess, but wrong. Hello, line three. Who's on the phone? Well, it's Paul from Bradford. All oh, boys again, hairy men. Give us a girl. Sorry, I didn't mean that. Uh, so uh, here's your third clue. Go on, Jess. It's an Olympic medal. It's an Olympic medal. It's a gold medal. So they've obviously won a gold medal, this person. A whistle, a trainer, and a gold medal. Daley Thompson. Daley Thompson. It is Daley Thompson. That's fantastic. Yay! It's Daley Thompson. And the fourth clue was, Bobby? It was the red herring. And the fifth clue was, Ian? 
A daily paper. Yes, are you in that toaster TV? It's 7.29 now. I've got to go. Bye. Bye. Oh, and uh, you, you sounded excited, didn't you? And uh, back to the crunch upstairs now with Zig and Zag for some more video games and Master Blaster. <laughs> yeah, we'll do the breakfast. Oh, no, do it's 9.29 and you're watching the big breakfast do, and it's the, the crunch bit. And guess whose birthday it is today? It's Andrea Sinnott. She's from Liverpool and she's 11 today. Cool. Cool. Are you going to take those... Pouring. Everybody's got their umbrellas, um, so I'll stand over you. What are we doing? What are we doing? Um, we're actually taking a haul to take this uh, fiberglass um, Rob, pond. Just behind you there. That's okay. Right. Now, how how deep do you have to dig this? Well, you have to dig it deep enough to drop drop it in in the ground yeah. and make it level with the earth. Oh right, level. You don't actually put it below and then build around it. No, no, it's not really a big enough pond for that. It's only a small. Now, pond. why why are we outside? Why are we here, not inside the, the fence? Apparently, there's a particular reason that you have to be here. Um, well, you need somewhere where to, you get plenty of sunlight. You right. don't want to be uh, in the shade because uh, the fish react to cold weather. If you're in the shade, um, the sun can't get at it at all in the winter. Oh, right. Oh, and brilliant. It can't warm up the water at all. Now, you've actually made quite a few of these, haven't you? At home, well, only at home. Only yeah, at home. It's the first time I've used one of these pre formed ones. Oh, right. Well, you keep digging. You know, also, once you've dug out the earth, yeah. before you put that in, is there something else you have to well, do? Well, you have to level it up. Right. Um, I used to use a, a square, put sand underneath the base, level it up square, and then sand. Put it, sand. Why do you put sand in? Uh, just to level it up, really. Right. And okay. it's a nice, nice base to do it on. And then, right. So you, then you drop the the fiberglass pond in there. That's right. What do you do around the edge so the so the black line around the edge is hidden? Uh, well, ideally, that shape. I should imagine rocks would be best. Take rocks. it right flat to the ground. Cover it round the edge with rocks. Um, probably have a stepping stone one side and yeah. maybe a little bit of earth dug out and put a few rockery plants in. Brilliant. Well, I'm sorry, sorry, can I leave you with the umbrella, though? Because I don't think it's very fair. Can we leave him an umbrella, please? Yeah, yes, I think yeah. that's very fair. <laughs> right, if you carry on digging away there, and uh, you're watching Channel 4, and this is The Big Breakfast. Dig away. I will. Dig away. <laughs> Keep digging. <laughs> Watch The Big Breakfast! Yeah. yeah, so this could be it. Have you seen this breaks that we've got? Mm. Just don't get upset, it's just for fun. This is a, a Chris and Paul of Combination Facts. And thank you very much for that. It comes from Vincent Harrigan. 14 million people can't be wrong. You're right. We're up to 14 million people now. Who's on your show today? Uh, we've got um, Patricia Hodge. Yes. We're just talking about her new play. Pat and Hodge. Her... Yeah. No, it's offence is Pat Hodge. All right. Pat, just because right. you're so intimate with her, because we're at work. Oh, and then we've got to stop being nasty to each other, oh, because sorry, apparently no, people think we don't get on, and we mm -hmm. do get on. We do. And then after that, competitions expert. OK. How you can win a night with Nigel Havers. Ooh. It's now uh, five minutes past eight, and has he found a traffic jam? As we ask once again... Where, where are, are you, Mark? I'm in Liverpool today. I'm on the A5 and and today's my favourite day, Monday, is traffic jam day, because I get loads of exhaust off the cars and it's nice and warm. And it's On Friday, so if you can get it exactly today, we will play a new Guess the Mess, but that's only after today's Peeper Report, which is coming up now. I'm Carol from Kirby. I want to know why I can't get a false leg for my cat's over. <laughs> want everybody to know about something you feel really strong about well send it in to us here okay boys read it out for me please beautifully done and it's monday as well what are you going to be like on friday eh? okay now it's time for you to guess this mess <laughs> later and I'm uh, You're not from Merseyside at all are you? No, no they're from fish ponds in Bristol. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to see what the what their house is like and what they got up to yesterday? Ooh. Do you like to see that? Go Let's have a look. Go on, go on, I'm embarrassed now. Don't <laughs> Let's have a look. Me. Don't me. This is the Chapel Madhouse here in Bristol. Hi, I'm Ian Chapel. I've been married to Lynn for 12 years. Hello, my name's Lynn. I'm married to Ian. I'm the mother of three children. I met Ian when he was delivering uh, milk. And um, I thought he was quite a dishy milkman, actually. Lynn's extrovert, fun-loving, happy-go-lucky. Hi, my name's Scott Chappell, and I'm seven years old. 
I want to be a rugby player when I grow up, and I want to play for England, and I want to be scrum half. Hello, my name is Bobby Chappell. I am 12 years old, and I go to football school in Bristol. And what I would like to be when I grow up is a, either an artist, a graphic designer, or an archaeologist. And I brought my pet pig with me today. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jeremy. I'm age 10, and I go to Chester Park Junior School. Me and Bobby always fight because he's always looking at stuff. Scott is, well, a pain in the neck sometimes, but he can play games with us. Ian, I'm terribly sorry, and I know you're nice and warm in here, but get your jacket on. Oh, we'd basket. like you to dig um, a garden pond. Oh, that's very nice, then. I'll go and uh, start that one. OK. What's he really like at all this DIY stuff? Um, well, I, I should imagine the pond would be all right, but anything indoors. Right, now how, how deep do you have to dig this? Well, you have to dig it deep enough. Why are we outside? Um, well, you need somewhere where to get plenty of sunlight. You right. don't want to be uh, in the shade. Well, you've actually made quite a few of these, haven't you? Haven't well, you? only home. Cover it round the edge with rocks. Um, probably have a stepping stone. Can we leave him an umbrella, please? Yeah. Yes, I think yeah. that's very fair. <laughs> We will have a look at that pond later on. Now, um, Ian, you yeah. do you do uh, shift work, don't you? Night, yeah. you work nights. What's the, what time do you get up and go to um, sleep? Well, I try to get go to bed about half past eight most mornings. If I can help with the kids, I can. If I'm too tired, I go straight to bed. So, what actually happens with meals in your house? If you're going to bed at eight thirty in the morning, Lynn, what do you do about feeding the family? Well, I have to uh, give the children their breakfast and get them off to school, and then I'm off to work then. But what do you do about dinner in the evenings? I do that. You do that? I do that. But that, is that Sometimes. breakfast, please? Sometimes, not always. And what, what, the middle of the day, is that, what do you call it then? You call it, still have the same meals as everybody else, and when you sleep in the day? Yeah, you still have the same meals. It's just not, work around it. You work around it. Yeah. Oh, well, Lynn works around it. We both work around it. Uh, All right, last well, week's Bambi that was from Merseyside, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Sorry, it was last week's Bambi that was from Merseyside. I'm very oh, sorry. Right. Yeah, no, they, no, you're from Bristol. It's from Fish Ponds in That's Bristol, right. not That's Merseyside. Right. OK, we'll be chatting to you some more later and we'll all... No, sorry, last week's family from Scotland. Shush! <laughs> yes, yes. It was the week before that was Merseyside. And we're also going to be doing some cooking later, aren't we? We're going to be doing some cooking, That's aren't we? Scotty, That's yeah. later on. But now, with the time at 7.09, it's time for Dennis. <laughs> Guess who's washing line it is? 0891 double And calls should cost no more than 25 pence. Your chance to win one of those wonderful pink Big Breakfast television sets. On the way on today's Big Breakfast on Tuesday, a man who lives with 40 guinea pigs, the search for a false leg for a three-legged cat. Day two of the Big Breakfast car show, and we call up a celeb to wish them happy birthday. It's uh, 20 past seven. I've just been told we did the three-legged cat yesterday. What is it with me today? <laughs> Go Shall I go home today? Yeah. No. no. 20 past 7 is the time, yeah. and it, I think I think that the big breakfast headlines and weather are next, but they, it may not be that. It may be like Patrick Moore with the stars or something. MPs get their chance to grill John Major today when he takes Prime Minister's questions for the first time since the Pitts crisis broke. Yesterday... No, we're just going to make some cakes. No, no sweet things. OK, Scott, why are you into cooking? Oh, because I like cooking, because there's all sorts of different things, and if I can't cook, it's not really very good for when I grow up. So you think it's a really good idea to get into cooking at this early age? So you're a new man, aren't you? Yeah. You're a new man, you're into cooking. All right, so what are we going to make today? We're making cakes, making very cake. cakes. sponge cakes. Sponge cakes. So this is a really easy thing to make, isn't it? OK, tell me what you've done so far. I put the eggs in, two tablespoons of water and the mix. And then you've mixed it all together. Mm. Now, do you think it's really important to wear a chef's hat when you're making sponge cakes? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. remember, yeah. wear your chef's hat. Okay, now we're going to have to put this into the little cups, aren't we? Mm. Now, these don't take very long to cook, do they? No? No. No? All right, are you going to... Do you want to spoon that in? You spoon those into there. I'll tell you what, we're going to have to ice it later on, aren't we? Yeah. Do you eat any chocolate, by the way? Yeah. Only you, sometimes. You, only sometimes, is that true, or does he eat it all the time? All the time. All the time. All the time. I get fish pops now. <laughs> Come on then, well, we'll spoon this into here, and um, you can join us afterwards, after the crunch, and we will ice these wonderful cakes. But now it's time to go upstairs with Zig and Zag and the crunch. Come on, we'll spoon these in. <laughs> Reason. Free, absolutely good. Jeremy, it's lovely today, isn't it, out here? Isn't it yeah. great, this game yeah. that yeah. we invented all those months ago in the summer? 
when we forgot about the fact that it might rain sometime. So we're outside here, we're trying to get you to win a toaster TV, and you're at home next to your phone, probably sat on the stairs with a cup of steaming tea and a piece of toast, and we're outside in the garden slaving away for you, but that's all right. Uh, the TV couldn't come out because it would blow up if we brought it out today because it's raining, so we just brought the remote control out, which also doubles up as a phone today. So who's on line one on the washing line? Hello. Lana Robinson, hiya. Hiya, where are you from, hiya, hiya? <laughs> York. Where? York? Yeah. Are you? Are you? Anyway, uh, so line one, uh, you've got to guess the idea of a famous person, and here's clue number one from Mum this week. And it's, oh, what's that then? It's a gothic door, that's what it is, a gothic door. And we're looking for a bloke. Uh, All right then. Um, Robert Smith. Right. No, that's wrong actually. Great guess though, wasn't it? Cracking guess. Line two, hello. Hello. Who's that? Claire Stevenson. Where are you from, Claire? Sunderland. Nice to talk to you. Are you do you support Sunderland or Newcastle? Um, well, I'm originally from Plymouth, so I support Plymouth, really. <laughs> but Sunderland. All right, well, thanks for that long uh, and uh, comprehensive answer, which I won't ask you any more personal questions, because we'll be here all day and it is raining, like I say. Uh, so, uh, you are line two. Clue number two from Jeremy. Oh, it's a woolly jumper. It's a woolly jumper and it's a bit of a naff one. So, remember that. It's a gothic door and a naff woolly jumper. Who do you think it is? Oof. I haven't got a clue. Have a guess. Um, Quick. No idea. OK, right. then, never mind. Line three, hello, who's on the phone? Keith Bridges. Where are you from, Keith? Edinburgh. Nice to talk to you, nice to talk to you. You've got to be quick because I'm getting very wet. Uh, Bobby, clue number three, please. Red oh, it's the red... Oh, we don't need the red heading at this stage in the game. So we've got a dodgy sweater and a gothic door. Who do you think it might be? Um, Teddy Waite. Teddy Waite? No, he doesn't wear dodgy sweaters. OK, then. Line four, hello. Hello. Who's that? Barbara O'Toole. Hi, Barbara, how are you? <laughs> I'm all right, thanks. Well done for getting through. 10,000 calls we had on this uh, this morning. 10,000 calls you got through. You're one of five. Clean number four, Dad? It's a beard. It's a beard. Come on now, quickly. A beard. Who do you think it might be? Dodgy sweater, gothic door, and a beard. Quickly. Oh, no. No, no, don't. No, okay, forget it. Line five. Hello, who's that? Hi, it's Jill from Avon. Okay, I've got to be very quick. I'm sorry about this. We have clean number five now, and it is. A helicopter. It is a helicopter. <laughs> so, what do you think the answer is? It's for a toaster TV. It's. Just say Father Christmas. Daughter says Father Christmas. <laughs> Father Christmas. <laughs> he arrives by helicopter now, uh, nowadays. Yes, we know. No, in fact, that's wrong. That's wrong. It was no Edmonds is the answer. No Edmonds. I'm sorry about that. So we save a toaster TV, but we are very wet. It's now half past seven, and back upstairs to zig and zag in the warmth and the crunch. Oh. Respect, respect, respect. Yeah. What have you cooked? Spaghetti. Spaghetti? Oh. Was it good? Yeah. 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 Lovely. All right, well, we'll have a look because he's really excited. Okay, let's see if they're ready. I put them in. Oh, wow. Scott, look at this. I'll take them out of the oven. This is a bit hot. Mm. If I put the carefully on the plate, can you. Oh, can you put the, the icing on for me? Mm. Uh, how would you make the icing? It's the same way as you do that. Oh, is it? Step you don't put in the oven. Oh, okay. Surely that's not the same mixture, though, is it? No. No. OK. Right, OK, let's put this on there, and then we can take these take these around to everybody. OK, I'm going to give you the question about the clip while he's busy. Ooh, smells wonderful. Right, the question about the clip is, how does Pingu finally cheer up his friend? But remember, don't no, phone, no, it's, it's just for fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here we are. It's one for you. Okay, it is Tuesday. It's uh, oh, look October at the... 20. Ah. It's always a mistake bringing mm. food onto the set. 1992. Okay. And uh, let's ask now on this rainy day, where are, are you, Mark? One double one. But now I'm joined by Jeremy. A ripple for Jeremy in the hall. There's only four of us here, isn't there, Jeremy? Okay, yeah. we're going to find out about you. So you're Jeremy Chapel. Yeah. From the Bristol area. Yeah. You're the family of the week this week. Well, yeah. you're one of them. You're not all the family, obviously. You're just one of them. And how many, um, how many, three boys? Yeah. Two brothers. Um, cats or a boy? No, or boys. Brothers. How many boys? How many brothers you got? Um, two, so two brothers. Cats. Two brothers. And you're the middle one? Yeah. Okay, how old are you? Um, ten years old. Okay, now, you mentioned cats straight away there. Because you want to talk about cats. Because all you ever talk about is cats, isn't it? Yeah. He's got a mad thing for cats. How many cats you got? Three. Three. And the names? Oscar, Puggy and Basil. And their ages? Um, I think one, six. Oscar's about 18 months and one of them's about three um, years old. Now, are they, are they, you say they're your cats, they're my cats. <laughs> are they your cats or are they the family's cats? The family's cat, but one of them's mine. Which oh. one? 
Um, Oscar. 18-month-old Oscar. Yeah. Now, tell us about your gang, because he's got this gang, haven't you, of all your mates? And you're called the Cat Gang. Um, we used to call it the Free Team, but now it's just the gang. We just talk about cats. So all his mates talk about cats. They go out at night, they hang around the shops. They used to call it the Fairy Gang, but now they do... What do you call it? Just... Um, just a gang. Just a, but it's, the topic of a, uh, conversation is always cats. Yeah, what about football and girls? Um, yeah, I play football. Yeah, but do you talk about it? No, just the cats. Just the cats. Well, your mate's got cats. Yeah. And all your nicknames are, are, are something fair, aren't they? Hmm. Yeah, so tell us some of your mate's nicknames. Um, Daniel... Da Bla Daniel is called Black Fur. Black Fur. I'm called, um, Ginger Fur. Yeah. And, Dan and Scott's called, um, White Fur. And I'm called Christopher. <laughs> hey! Sorry. <laughs> Uh, right, so uh, you, you've not brought any cats in with you, though, have you? No. No, but you're going to give us some tips on the cats later on in the week. And also, you're a bit of a golfer, aren't you? Yeah. Have you brought your golf clubs with you to London? Um, no. No? Do you want to borrow mine on Thursday? Yeah, okay. We'll have a game of golf on Thursday, yeah? Yeah. It's a deal. OK, this is The Big Breakfast. That was Jeremy with his cat fetish, and uh, you're watching Channel 4. <laughs> And Rachel, Rachel from Burke on Trent, also <laughs> thinks Jeremy's really cute. Jeremy, two fans. And half the women here thinks Jeremy is really, really cute. Really cute. <laughs> All of them. Yeah, and the boys and everybody, in fact. And, and the, the, the Lucky the Hen thinks he's gorgeous. <laughs> okay, we've got the phone number for the guest the mess. No? No, uh, we, yes, is it we there? have. Okay, Thank phone you, this is. number now. 0891333311 at a cost of uh, no more than 25p. 0891333311. If you can get a film title out of this mess, because we're going to ask you to guess the mess after the break. Keepers Cottages, Old Ford Lock, London, E3 2NN. And that's also the address for everything you want to send in to us here at The Big Breakfast. Coming up after the Guess the Mess, we are going to be playing window boxes and find out how you can plant your Coluna vulgaris. But now, guess this mess. You cook at strange times of day, mm. and you come from fish ponds in Bristol, mm -hmm. and um, window boxes now. Mm. Do you, have you done these at home? I've done lots of them, hanging baskets and um, these sorts of things. Got lots at home. Is, is it a good time of year to do it now? Yeah, something to brighten up the front of the house. This time of year, everything's dull and boring, isn't it? And raining and... Mm. OK, so how do we begin? Well, I'd uh, put some ivies in. These are nice because they look rather no, like geraniums as well. you begin with well. what you put in there, though, don't oh, you? Yeah. Yes. Well, Right, we're starting off with the box. Yeah. Make sure that there are drainage holes. Right. Um, and then I put something like gravel, broken pots, bricks or whatever in the bottom, just a thin layer for, for drainage. All right, then you put your earth on. Um, any sort of compost from a, a garden okay. centre. Right. Yeah. Um, Can and you just get earth from the garden? Can you go and dig earth out of the garden and put it into a window box? Was that not a good idea? Well, it should be all right. Yeah? Yeah. Have some fertiliser then. Well, it saves many as well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then I start off with ivies. These are nice because they, they look similar to geraniums as well, you know, all different colours. Um, and I put those in the corners. And, and are, is ivy good all year round? Yeah. Mm. Right, okay. Uh, so, so, I mean, that should, that's uh, a lot of green in your window box. Yeah. Um, and then we've got some heathers, uh, you know, different heathers. A large yeah. one there. I've got two smaller ones that I'll place at the back. Um, and then you fill in with pan... Uh, these are pansies, winter flowering pansies. Okay. So, is it you just do a, a whole mixture of flowers and colours? The more colourful, the better. Yeah. yeah. And then, put, then oh, I mean, with crocus or anything for, for you know smaller bulbs, I just go that. It's supposed to be about two inches depth. Well, two, that's two <laughs> inches. All right. Well, we'll leave <laughs> and you then to just finish pop this one off because right. it's going to go on the outside of our house. Yeah. But thank you very much. And uh, right. the boys, I'll leave you doing that. And the boys have got the question for, for the clip. Go on then. What is Crichton desperately trying, trying to do? What is Crichton desperately trying to do? But remember, don't, don't phone. phone. It's, it's just for fun. fun. Come on, what is it? It's a, it's a, it's a... She's going to uh, analyse your dreams and she's going to be talking to a very funny man, Frank Skinner, and I bet that interview's going to be funny. I don't know why, I can just feel it's going to be funny. OK, the OB's been in West Horton in Lancashire today and Mark's there now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just got to say thanks a lot and goodbye. Thanks to the Worth family. Pleasure. Thank Pleasure. you very much. Saved the day completely. And thanks to the uh, Wigan <laughs> Rugby League athlete, athlete. I'd have said the wrong word because you're mucking me about now. <laughs> all say goodbye and all do your Chris Evans impressions. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>
Is that what I look like? Fantastic. OK, PJ tomorrow is going to crack his nose, but he's going to give us... If you just be very quiet for this, PJ will crack his nose for you now. Very quiet. He's going to do more of this tomorrow. Listen. Oh. <laughs> also on tomorrow's show, day three of the Big Breakfast Car Show, and zig and zag with Bjorn again and Junior Jukebox Jury. Oh. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. 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 It's Wednesday, October... To join Urban Cargo. To crack his nose. What? It won't work. Why won't it work? It's too cold. It's too cold? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, give us your stomach, then. Go on. Give us, oh, no. give us your stomach. stomach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bobby's disgusting habits. And when he's warmed his nose up, we'll have his cracking nose, warmed shall we? his nose, yes. Yeah, OK. It's Thanks, six Bobby. minutes past seven. And uh, let's there. see what the family have been up to <laughs> for the whole of the week oh. since they've been here. This is the Chapel Madhouse here in Bristol. Come on, let's hear it for them, please. Woo! They are the chapels from Fish Ponds. If you could please introduce yourselves going that way around. Dad first. I'm here, in Chapel. I'm Lynn, Mum. I'm Bobby. I'm Jerry. I'm Scott. This is Scott. And how old are you? Seven. Seven years old, and he's into cooking. Now, have you cooked before for family? Yeah. What have you cooked? Spaghetti. Spaghetti? Oh. Was it good? Yeah. 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 We are going to be playing window boxes and find out how you can plant your Kaluna vulgaris. OK, Scott, why are you into cooking? Oh, because I like cooking because there's all sorts of different things and if I can cook, it's not going to be very good for when I grow up. I've got lots of them, hanging baskets and um, these sorts of things. Got lots at home. Yeah. All right, so what are we going to make today? We're making cakes. Making very cakes. sponge cakes. Because you want to talk about cats, because all you ever talk about is cats, isn't it? Yeah. Right, we're starting off with the box. Yeah. Make sure that there are drainage holes. I put the eggs in, two stew tablespoons of water and the mix. Because he's got this gang, haven't you, of all your mates, and you call the cat gang. Then I start off with ivies. These are nice because they, they look similar to geraniums. Now it's just a gang. We just talk about cats. So all these men talk about cats. Scott, look at this. I'll take them out of the oven. It was a bit hot. I'm called um, Ginger Fur. Yeah. And, Dan and Scott's called um, White Fur. And I'm called Christopher. Hey! Any of the crew want one then? Yeah! yeah. Oh. OK, guys, we're going to be talking to you, too. We've just seen you do your revolting tummy thing, and um, hold on, let me just... Warm Is it warmer? No. All right, I'll keep warm. doing that all morning, and we'll see if we can warm it up by the time we'd like you to do it. Tell me about when you um, cut Scott's ponytail off. Is that true? Yeah. Go on, what did you do? We, um, my mum and my mum's friend were messing around, pretending he was trying to cut his ponytail off, and I thought um, they were doing it for real. So when he went um, outside the house to wave goodbye to my mum's friend, I sneaked up behind him and cut his penny cell off. <laughs> and then you weren't very happy about that, I mm. bet. Oh, and also um, his front tooth? Yeah, I had um, these roller boots and I was rolling um, down the hill behind him and he was pulling me and I fell right on top of him and his tooth came out. Your Is that that one there? Go on, show everybody. Oh, you haven't grown yet. <laughs> That's the tooth that you knocked out? Well, it's not there now, is it? Oh, you <laughs> horrible person. I'll just keep warming up your nose. It's very fat. Uh, what? It was bent back, so I had to have it took out. Oh, he bent it back? Mm. That sounds even more painful. Mm. Oh, and you, you, on my right, you've got all the girls ringing in for you, haven't you? Um, you had um, Rachel from Pringle School, Burton on Trent, and we gave her a call. Now, she wants to tell you a little bit about her. She's very good at maths, she likes Monopoly, hates spiders, has long brown hair, hazel eyes, and she first noticed you yesterday morning while she was drinking her coffee. <laughs> Would you like us to give her a call so you can talk to her? No. No. <laughs> Rachel, I hope you're still watching. We'll see what we can do for you. But now it's time for uh, Bobby's alter ego. It's time for Dennis. <laughs> yeah. What is this? A nickel book of glory? Yeah. You're revolting, aren't you? How's your nose doing? How are you doing? It's all right now. It's all right now. Well, you can do it later on. Why are we making a nickel book of glory? Um. <laughs> Just for fun? Yeah. Don't oh, and it's just for fun. We'll make it for Jeremy as well, yeah. though, won't we? Because we're going to see how much Nicker Booker Glory Jeremy can eat. So we want this full to the brim, Bobby. Kay. All right? 
Let's your glass now. Start and talk us through it, please. Um, what I'm going to put in first yeah. is um, some uh, mushed up flake at the bottom. Go on, do it. We'll do it for real. Shall I help you as well? Yeah. Are you, do you like things like this? Yeah. yeah. Are you greedy? Yeah. You are. <laughs> I did, Jeremy and Scott, are they also? Yeah. They are. You could eat all of this, Mr. Scott. There we are. All right, now what's um, next? Put um, some of these in. What's that? Nuts. Nuts, okay. Then... Do, you, do you make these sort of things at home? No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, quick. Let's get as much in as we possibly can. Lots of fruit as well. Yeah? Go on, you get the fruit um, ready. Tell you what, we'll, you come back to us, because we want to make this as full as possible because we're going to make it for Jeremy, aren't we? Yeah. Okay, go on. Keep putting stuff in. Tell you, while we're doing this, if you'd like to go upstairs to Zigzag and the Crunch. Come on, we'll fill this up. Right, ooh. <laughs> today for some bizarre reason, maybe because there are no clouds again. But it's time for Who's Watching Line Is It Anyway, where you can win this TV, and we've only got 10 million left, so get your calls coming in quickly. All right? Be one of these people with a toaster TV. Uh, you've got to guess the uh, identity of a famous person. I've forgotten the answer, but I know when the clues... Oh, I've just remembered the answer. And when the clues start coming out, uh, you'll guess it too. Line one on the washing line on my Apple phone today. Hello? Hello. Who's that? John from Alaba. How are you, John? Hey, how are you? I'm all right. You're going to watch the match tonight? Yes. Who do you support, Rangers or Celtic? Celtic. Celtic. So, you're, so, so really, you're not that interested in tonight's game, are you? Yes. Do you, want, do you want Rangers to get stuffed? No, not really. It's a Scottish club. OK, all right. So you're going to stick up for Rangers and I'll stick up for Leeds. Fair enough? OK. OK, but very amicably. OK, clue number one for your toaster TV, and I'd like you to win it, if you don't mind. Scott's got it for us, and it's a... Fishing rod. Oh, it's a fishing rod. OK, it was supposed to... It's obviously not a fishing rod. It's a piece of wood with a piece of string on it because we couldn't get a fishing rod. Um, but there it is. That's it. That's your fishing rod. And uh, it's a politician we're looking for, so who do you think it might be? Big David clue. Steele. Who? David Steele? That well-known fishing politician? Yes. No, that's wrong, unfortunately. OK, don't worry about that because it's, it's a rubbish one anyway. Yeah, the best thing for this is just, like, throw it away <laughs> over there. OK, so line two. Hello. Oh, hello. Who's that? It's Pauline Lewis. How are you, Pauline? I'm fine, thank you. And where are you calling from? Wolverhampton. Okay, well done for getting through. 10,000 calls this morning and you got through, so well done. Okay, okay. Lynn, Lynn have you got clue number two? Yeah. It's um, the Mary White House Experience Encyclopedia is clue number two. Oh, I don't know, I can't even think. No? No. Oh, all right then. Well, well done for getting through anyway. Uh, line three, hello. Hello. Who's that? Claire from now, town. Claire, you have a guess, all right? Because you've done all the hard work, you've got through, we've got clue number three for you. Here we go, from the very, very dapper member of the Chapel family. It's Red Herring. Oh, it's the Red Herring, no further clue. Um, OK. What do you think the answer is? The only one I can think of is Mary Whitehouse. Mary Whitehouse? Hmm. No, 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 good guess, cos she's a politician, but I don't think she fishes very well. Uh, you've got line four now. Hello, line four for the Toaster TV. Who is it? All right, Chris. Steve from Liverpool. All right, Steve, how are you, lad? Not bad, mate. <laughs> great, 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 mate. <laughs> OK, we've got clue number four, and you're going to get this. I know you are. Go on, mate. United States flag. Oh, so it's, a, it's an American politician. We've got a White House book, and we've got a fishing rod. Who do you think it could be? Ronald Reagan. No! <laughs> <laughs> Line five, hello. 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 Who's that? Elaine from Clacton. Elaine, have you seen all the clues so far? Yes. OK, go on, then. Here we go. BJ. It's, it's a twig, it's actually a leaf, but it's supposed to be a bush. George Bush! Yes! Yay! That last clue didn't help you at all, did it? No. It's, uh, well done, you get your toaster TV. It's, uh, you get OK, bye! Bye! Okay, okay. It's 7.29 uh, now, let's go back upstairs with Zig and Zag. Here we go. And the Junior Jukebox jury. Uh, this yeah. is Paula. You see? Where? And your one's Chris. Yeah, well, yeah, I've got, I've just got Chris. <laughs> I've, I've got Chris. Oh, these are hilarious, these things, aren't they? OK, now, we decided that Bobby, because Knickerbocker Glories were his favourite thing in the world, that he'd make one for his brother. <laughs> Why are you making it so revolting? Because I want to make him sick. <laughs> All right, Jeremy, come here. Actually, no, Jeremy, stay there. Stay there. Just because, just for that, you're going to eat it yourself. <laughs> yes! 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 Come on. <laughs> come on. Go on. Start. <laughs> right, go on. You keep eating that. You keep telling him to eat it, and I'll give you the question about the clip. Keep going. Keep go Go on. Eat. Eat. The question about the clip is, who comes to the rescue of Krista and Zach? But remember, don't phone. It's just for fun. Eat. Go on. Oh. 
That's what happens oh, when you're a, a little brat. Me. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah, a little it's bit greedy. 741. The question about the clip was who comes to the rescue of He's now going to give us some handy hints on everything in the whole wide world. The to whole do, wide world. <laughs> to do with secondhand shopping. Because you do it all the time, don't you? I do, yeah. Why I did you too. start secondhand shopping? I think so. I don't have the time or the, the money, to be honest, not with three growing lads, um, to be able to go downtown. Yeah. I heard it was because Ian withdrew your. Uh, yeah, your allowance, tight. your clothing allowance, is it's that one? It's tight, yeah. What do you do for a living yourself? Um, I'm a financial assistant. Ooh. Ooh. So this all makes financial sense. Yes. Yeah. And uh, did you feel embarrassed at all about buying second-hand clothes to start off with? No. M my fr uh, well, my friends used to be embarrassed coming with me. Oh, I've got to go in there. And they, you know, oh, not What kind of shops, shops are we talking about? Clothes shops. Yeah, we're talking like about Dr. Oxfam Bernardo's. Or, yeah. Well, any of them, they're all good. Click, Dr. Bernardo's. Because the, the oh, upper, because they have sort of upper market charity shops now, and they have down market charity mm. shops now. And the upper market ones, you do tend to find a few designer clothes in there now and again, don't you? You do, yeah. I mean, lovely. look at me. This is all, you know, all 15p. <laughs> all 15p from Have a Stock <laughs> Hill High Street, I can tell you that much. <laughs> and so, did, did, did you have um, lovely clothes before you started second-hand shopping? Did you have desi did the designer fetish, did you already have that inbuilt? Um, I've always liked clothes. So you know, you know what you're looking so for on the peg? Yeah. What labels are you looking for then? Well, um, <laughs> me, at the moment, just sort of Selfridges, Wallace, that sort of stuff. Nothing really over the top. Okay. You know. None of the grand designers, the Galliano. No, if you're lucky, you Conrad's. can find those, but you, not very often, not the places I shop. Okay, well, we took you out shopping, didn't we, with a lovely Mariana, our lovely yes, assistant. And where did you go shopping? Um, just in the Fish Ponds area, my little area, and there's lots of. Oh, lots we came up to Bristol to see, did we? Yes. Oh, lovely, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's have a look what happened. How much did you take with you? Not a lot. Come on, tell me how much your allowance was for the day. Ten pounds. Ten pounds, that's all you had to spend. OK. Now, what would you pay to be in there with her, eh? <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, she looks lovely. Did you go for that one? No? No. Did you go for that one? Not really. No, I don't like that at all. <laughs> Two secretary. Oh, now that hat's gorgeous. <laughs> that hat is gorgeous. Oh, that's what you went for. That's what she went for. And in fact, that's what you're wearing now. Come on, stand up. Give us a twirl. My shoes are wobbly, mate. <coughs> ooh, ooh. What's that hanging out of there? There we are. It's, does she look great? Is that yeah. nice for a tenner? And that was £10. It's £10. OK, fantastic. That's great, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So you'd highly recommend it to everybody? I would. OK, so if you get any bargains, any uh, designer labels in your um, charity shops in your area, tell us where the shops are, where you get the best bargains and how much things cost, why don't you? But for the moment, Lynn, thank you very much. Thank you. This is Channel 4. It's uh, 7.48. You're watching a Big Breakfast. I have to have something in the morning. Oh, I have men for breakfast. <laughs> Just a toast. The Big Breakfast? Yeah. <laughs> On Monday, the, EE, the EC decided that women could not purely... You go here. It's from Charlotte Green in Southampton. Her first car was a Yugo called Yasmin, and she still has it and she still loves it. Aww. Yasmin the Yugo. Now, Bobby's here with his uh, amazing, disgusting habits. We're going to try <laughs> for the cracking of the nose. We tried earlier on, but uh, it was too cold, his nose, the cartilage. But don't try this at home, because it's just for fun. Um, here we go. Shh. Best of order. coming up now as you can see it says as seen on tv and all royalties go to the catherine house hospice today's super hint mm. <laughs> uh, 21 minutes to nine i've just asked them in the break whether they're happy or not because they seem like a doldrum old bunch today <laughs> but evidently i was wrong the question about that clip was whose car is the little red corvette and the answer was jess the chiefs the chiefs now jeremy what about all these girls that are calling up for you one wanting your wanting everything in fact are you changing your mind about them at all? Yeah. Yeah, you are? Do you, would you like to, to follow up a lead that we've got for you or not? No. No. <laughs> all right, then, fair enough. So, girls, you just can't have him. He's handsome, but he's not yours. Coming up, Yates talks to Skinner. Uh, we tell you what your dreams mean and Cupid's arrow. But now the final phone call from final Gabby. Phone call from today. William from Cambridge. Charlie Morgan has a surprise waiting from outside Partside School. I hope it's a nice surprise. <laughs> OK, and faxes were your dreams and phone us were your dreams in the next 15 minutes if you want us to tell you what your dream meant last night. 081 985 1111. 081 985 2222. But now. With the time at 8.40, it's over to Peter Smith with a big. Just been chatting away, that's all towards the end of the show. On tomorrow's show, on the big breakfast, right here, live and lovely, Zig and Zag make world record hold, hold up Steve Smith high jump in the bathroom, which should be fun. We have some movie news for you in Snap, Cackle and Pop. 
And Paula is joined in her boudoir with uh, rogue Anthony Newley, who is the ex-husband of Joan Collins, if you don't know, and chanteur of the fantastic Pop Goes the Weasel, was the highlight of his career as far as I'm concerned. But thanks for watching for now, and uh, Gabby's over there. Yes, Come on, Rob, got... come say hello, goodbye to Gabby. Yeah, yeah, Scott, Scott, he's got a final phone call. Go on, give us a call. I mean, give us a to read it out. Happiest 20th birthday, Mum and Dad. Anniversary, Mum and Dad from James, and Gemma and Kieran. Gemma and Kieran. And there'll be more from Scott tomorrow morning. And from all of us, we'll see you seven o'clock here on Channel Four. Bye bye. <laughs>
the carrots um, and the vegetables. All that has to be done by hand, actually. That's from a knitting pattern. I take these yeah. and all the sausages and everything. All this is done by machine. Does it take you a long time to do this? Um, it does quite, take quite a long time, but the more I'm doing, the quicker I'm getting. So. How, how many do you do? Um, how many do you make a week? Um, I can only really do two, or at a maximum three, because they are quite, you know, intricate, really, knitting. They're but, wonderful. Um, well, did you know that it's actually the National Knitting and Stitching Show in London this week? No, I didn't. So it's quite <laughs> apt. Thank you very much for bringing those in. If you'd like to be the family of the week and come here and join us in the kitchen and join us all week long and bring all sorts of things that you can make along, then send it to The Big Breakfast, two lock keepers cottages, Old Ford Lock, London E3 2NN. And you could be the family of the week and join us all week. Or you can always give us a call on The Big Breakfast phone number or fax us on the fax line. But now it's time to go upstairs with Zig and Zag and it's time for the crunch. <laughs> Side here in the Lock Keepers Cottage Garden, October 22nd, 1992. Time to play Whose Washing Line Is It Anyway? You've been phoning in your thousands. We had 55,000 calls for this yesterday. Ooh. And we have the koala bear phone today, which is great, isn't it? Line one, hello. Hello. Who's this? Richard. Richard, how are you? All right, mate, how are you? And, well, I'm fine. Where are you calling from? Vista, near Oxford. Oh, hello there. So you're only down the road. Come on. Have you got frosty breath in your house? No, no, it's all, mate. OK, well, uh, this is your TV here that you can win if you get it after the first clue. Your job's the hardest, of course, because you've got the least clues. Uh, so let's have the first clue, then. It's a burger mix. It's a burger, a, veg a veggie burger mix, and we're looking for a pop star. I'll give you that clue. Uh, a pop star, because it's very unfair that you only get one clue when you're first on, so I'll give you an extra clue. Uh, Linda McCartney. Uh, no, great guess, though. Cracking guess, in fact. Uh, line two, hello. Hello, it's Natasha. Who's that? Who is Sasha. it? Sasha. Sasha? Yeah. Where are you from, Sash? Hash. Hash? Yes, from I'm sorry. Hash or Tash? Hash. Oh, OK, well, put the speaker near me. Look, the speaker, come here, Rob. Have a look where the speaker is. See, because this koala bear phone obviously doesn't really work, and I've got this dodgy car speaker over there that tells me who's on the phone. I'm sorry, Tash, OK? Where are you from? Birmingham. Really? Bristol? Fantastic. <laughs> OK, so here's your clue. Here's your clue. Number two. It's the 21st of October, which, of course, is yesterday's day. Go on, then. Veggie Paul mixer. McCartney. Paul McCartney! Paul McCartney, yesterday, yes! Yes, you got it, you got it. I couldn't hear you properly, but I've just been told you got it because the speaker's now over the other side of the wall. A clue number three was the red herring. Yes? From, from Bobby. <laughs> what was that? I, what, what? Is that you, then, Tash? It was. What? It was, it was me. Well, what's wrong with you? Well, I can't believe the fact that I've just won a TV. Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> She's mad, isn't she? OK, let's go upstairs, half past seven. Uh, time to go back to the crunch with the champ. Yes, indeed. It's 9.20. You're watching The Big Breakfast on Channel yes. 4. And in studio or wherever in the bathroom and stuff like that. The Big Breakfast. Because hey, somebody knocked my tooth out yesterday. If you're going to the dentist, we want to know about it. If you've got any de dentist stories, tell us. Cam from Aldershot says, Claire, age six, hope you're feeling better after the dentist took eight of your teeth out yesterday. Oh. Have you got one? I've got a yes. joke. I've got a joke. Yeah. Did you hear about the dentist who became a brain surgeon? Go on. The drill slipped. That's right. Oh. <laughs> That's from Gareth Webb, age 12, and that's from you shot. Where's you shot? I can't remember. Doesn't oh, show now. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually a good joke, but nobody got it. Go on, give us the question about the clip. <laughs> the question about the clip <laughs> is what does the prince turn into? But don't phone, it's, it's just so for fun. Brilliant. Morning. I'm Chris. Hello. Hello. Ian's joining me now because we're going to give the telephone number away again. If you've got any financial queries, Ian, if you'd like to read out the number for us, please. It's telephone 081 985 1111. And faxes? 081 985 2222. That's if you've got any financial queries. But now, just for Ian, so nobody else, okay, you've got to ask, where are you, Mark? Okay, go on. Where are you, Mark? Was that it? <laughs> Scott Chapel. Yay! Here he comes onto the pitch. Fantastic Scott Chapel. Hello, Scott. How are you? Okay. Okay, now Scott is uh, how old are you? Seven. Seven. Are you the youngest member of the family this week? Yeah. Okay, we've met your nan earlier on. Do you like your nan? What? Do you like your nan? Yeah. Is she your favourite? Yeah. She go around for Sunday dinner and she's all nice to you. Does she give you spends? Yeah. Well, she's a great nan, then, if she gives you spends. That's the only criteria for a great nan, giving you spends. Has she ever given you a fiver? 
Yeah, for my birthday. A fiver for his birthday. But we're out here, obviously, to talk about golf. Obviously. Or maybe rugby, even. Uh, which rugby team do you play for? Whitehall. Now, is that union or league? Rugby union or rugby league? League. Rugby league. OK, fair enough. And uh, what position do you play? Scrum half. OK, and are you, regular, are you a regular in the team? Are you regularly picked? Yeah. Every week? Yeah? Have you ever scored a try? Yeah. OK. Now, uh, there's a huge match happening on Saturday, isn't there? Mm. Tell us about the match that's happening on Saturday. Uh, my dad, I think my dad be there, but I won't. What's the match? I don't know. It's, uh, it's uh, Australia versus uh, Wigan, isn't it? Or is it England? No, Australia. <laughs> no, Australia versus England. England, sorry. And Ellery Hanley's just been picked for it as well, hasn't he? Mm. He's made his comeback. But you're scrum half, and uh, what, what does scrum half do? What's his job in the team? He has to throw it in the scrum. Yep. He has to either hook it out. Yep. The hooker either hooks it out or he, they just walk over it and the hooker, the scrum half, grabs the ball and passes it to the player. Now, can you tackle, though? Yeah. OK, give me the ball. We'll see if you can tackle. Rob, you go back here. OK. Now, hang on a sec. Are you with me, Rob? Yeah. OK, I've got the ball. I've got the I'll ball. I'll take my medal. OK, take your medals off. They won't help you in this game, I can tell you that, Sonny. Ready for this, Rob? Yeah, ready. OK. <laughs> Jeez! Whoa. Big I'm breakfast! Doing better one, Channel but I think four. Rob's left. That was very good. He's only seven. <laughs> Post. I like Robbage. Totally. Yeah, Chris going on like that. OK, Ian, if you'd like to guess the mess, Ian's going to give you the number now. The number is 0891 3 and Corsia costs no more than 25, 25 pence. pence. But now it's time to guess this mess. And remember, do phone. It's not just for fun. It's 8.30. 8.30. Now it's time for today's people report. It's Judge the Grudge. <laughs> I said it. My name is Colonel Abraham. What do you think? Should Giovanni stop copying Abraham? What do you think, first of all? Yes, definitely. He should stop, stop. copying. Yep. OK, and from the crew, can we please have a show of hands? Should Giovanni stop copying Abraham? No. I actually think no, that Giovanni should stop. I think that's what came through there. Now, yes. that means I've got Giovanni on the telephone. Giovanni? Hello, Giovanni, are you there? Giovanni, are you with us? Giovanni, you're not with us, so I hope you're watching, because you've got to abide by the judge's decision. You have got to stop copying Abraham, OK? Yeah. Plenty of that. No more copying. But I think both the Elvises, or Elvis I, as I said before, were very good. Now, if you've got a grudge that you'd like us to judge, and I still can't say it properly, this is the address, the People Report or Judge the Grudge. The Big Breakfast, 2 Lockkeepers Cottages, Old Ford Lock, London, E3, 2NN. Thank you, Liz. Thank you very much for smile on her face. Now it's time to go upstairs and for you to guess this mess. This is the Chapel Madhouse here in Bristol. Hello, my name's Lynn. Hi, I'm Ian Chapel. Hello, my name is Bobby Chapel. Hi, my name's Scott Chapel. Hello, my name's Jeremy. Coming out of the tunnel now, please welcome Scott Chapel. <laughs> now Bobby's here with his uh, amazing, disgusting habits. Bobby's going to crack his nose. What? Why won't it work? It's too cold. It's too cold. <laughs> <laughs> but we're out here, obviously, to talk about golf. Obviously. Or maybe rugby, even. Can we have the spade, Liz? Oh, yes. Okay. Um, you thought you could be nice and warm. It is cold here. But we'd nice like you bit. to dig um, a garden pond. Oh, that's very nice. Then. I'll go and uh, start that one. OK. And uh, what position do you play? Scrum half. Is it warmer? Oh, Isn't she looking great? This is Lynn, who's uh, the mum of the family of the week, and Lynn is now going to give us some handy hints on everything in the whole wide world. Now, Jeremy, what about all these girls that are calling up for you, want, wanting your, wanting everything, in fact? Are, are you changing your mind about them at all? Yeah. Yeah, you are? Do you, would you like to, to follow up a lead that we've got for you or not? No. No. All right, then, fair enough. So, girls, you just can't have him. He's handsome, but he's not yours. Now, can you tackle, though? Yeah. OK, give me the ball. We'll see if you can take them. Stand up, let, give us a twirl. My shoes are wobbly, mate. <laughs> ooh, ooh. What? It's because you look great. Is that yeah. nice for tenor? Yes, this is disgusting. I do apologise for this. Oh! Ready for this, Rob? Yeah. OK. <laughs> Jeez! Bye! Bye. Bye. 
gentlemen, here are the big breakfast and the last day from the chapels from fish ponds. Oh, have you had a good week? Yeah, very good. Enjoyed yourself. Really enjoyed yeah. it. You with your nose. We <laughs> might get you to do that again later. Right, we also thought, you know, as it was your last day here as a family of the week, we'd get you to do some consumer testing. All right? Yeah, right. Um, Mum and Dad this time, all right? Can we move this out of the way? Duncan, have we got... We've actually got sent in straight from America. These, um, was it one calorie, is one it? Calorie, one calorie, calorie low-fat low fat fat hot chocolate. Let's, Here, that, let's move that out of the way. Okay, we want to know... I've got to use a spoon with that. <laughs> no, you've got to drink it. In fact, this is only one calorie. One and calorie. I want to know, we had some cakes in a couple of weeks ago. If you go first, you won't, you're right, you go first. Don't what do you think? <laughs> one calorie. I don't believe all this stuff. What do you think? Yeah, that's really nice. Is it nice? Yeah, you can get nice. it on your nose. Either. Okay. Why not? Lynn. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> do you like it? What's <laughs> 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 <It's> the matter? <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> and I wonder if that's because it's just one calorie, or I wonder if that's because that's in fact shaving foam. <laughs> now, you might think that's really, really cruel of us. But in fact, I've got his name here, Philip King, your boss from work. <laughs> I'll kill him. Philip, I'll kill him. <laughs> Philip, <laughs> Philip, are you on the phone? I am. Hello, <laughs> Philip. Hello. Um, can you tell us uh, three things that Lynn has done as practical jokes to you? Three things? Yes, please. What's the first one? Well, I think the one that worked the best was the day that she covered my dashboard in snails and leaves in the car. Oh, oh that's revolting. Thing to do. You're right. All right, and the second one? Uh, well, she, she heard one day that I liked jelly fruits, so she brought some into the office, left them on the side, left one on the top layer, and it was too obvious, really, so I offered that last one to the chairman, which made her face drop just a little bit. <laughs> it was good fun, that one. And was good. Why, why was that one revolting? Well, she, she got this jelly fruit and she'd cover it in salt and done this to it. Oh, lovely. <laughs> and the third and final revolting practical joke that Lynn has played. Well, the beauty of Lynn's practical jokes is that they always go wrong. Because <laughs> <laughs> the day that she covered a... Well, she, basically, she covered the toilet with cling film. The best... Oh, uh, oh, no. <laughs> poor old lady who came down to Liverpool. She was going to a christening or something. She got lost came into the office asking for directions, said, oh, by the way, could I use your toilet? And Lynn had to say no. Oh. <laughs> Philip, I'm gonna, uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning. I'm going to hand you over to Lynn, so um, see what sort of things you'd like to talk about. But thank you for joining us. OK. Lynn, we thought you were such a nice person. Here, have a turn to Philip on the phone. Hello. And now here's a very, very typical practical joker Hello. at 7.10. Here's Wait, Dennis. of the week. He's from Fishbones from Bristol and this is his presenting moment. Go for it. Now it's time upstairs for the crunch. Now it's time to go upstairs for the crunch. Brilliant. Woo! Thank Yay! you, Scott. Let's go. Wake up, Z. Morning of the year this year, and after this weekend, it starts to get light again because uh, we take the clocks back on Saturday night, and that's why we're out in the garden. That's why my phone today is a torch on the washing line game, where you have to game the uh, get guess the ID of a very famous person to win this toaster TV over here on line one. Hello. Hello. Who's that? Linda Bowley from Loughborough, Leicestershire. How are you, Linda? Fine. <laughs> are you all right? Yes. Good. Okay. Clue number one to this very famous person. A joke book. Oh, you said it, saying it. A joke book. All right then. A joke book. OK, so it's obviously a funny person we're looking for. Could be me, obviously, but isn't. Uh, so who do you think it is? Um, it's, a, it's, a it's a bloke. Uh, yeah. A Cooper. Cooper? Cooper. Tommy, Tommy Cooper. Cooper. Who? Cooper. Who? Tommy Cooper. Tommy Cooper, no. Bye. Uh, line two, hello. Hello. Who's this? Uh, Lloyd Chappell from Portsmouth. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's me Friday, hello. OK, so clue number one was 10,000 crucial gags. Clue number two from Nan is like this. A map of Wolverhampton. It's well, a map of Wolverhampton. Map. <laughs> so who do you think it is then, kiddo? Uh, Lenny Henry. It is Lenny Henry! <laughs> Fantastic! Did you know he came from Wolverhampton, yeah? Uh, no, I've got, got it on the first one, actually, the crucial bit. Oh, the crucial bit, OK. We had here a clue that means nothing. It says, Phil, will you wait? Uh, and that's off Lynn. A message to her boss. Jeremy had the French flag. Dawn French is his wife. Red herring means not a thing. And Bobby had a red nose because he's in charge of um, comic relief, as always. 7.28. Uh, goodbye. Bye. Bye. You've won a toast to TV. Fantastic. I'll cue Zig and Zag, and they'll cue Richard. Yeah. And Richard... 
weekend. I'm getting married, so I'll see you in church. Kirsty Ford, Lee Fletcher, Derbyshire. And the other one? Sam Haslen is going to the oh, Birmingham Motor Show this, week, this weekend. He's going to the Birmingham Motor Show this weekend. Enjoy yourself. And by the way, Top Gear last night was absolutely wonderful. And more of that on Sunday. And, of course, the last part of the Big Breakfast Motor Show outside later on. But first of all, a question about the clip. Why does Rocky, Rockbiter want them to be quiet? But remember... Don't vote, it's just your vote. Nice and quiet. <laughs> And now they're getting on well already. So here we are with uh, Bobby and with Jeremy. Had a good week today? Yeah. Uh, had a good week today? Had a good week all week? Yeah. Yeah? Enjoyed it in London? Yeah. Last day on the programme, bit sad. Yeah. You've been begging me to play golf all week, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I brought some clubs in for you, so you go and have a practice outside. Go on, while I talk to your brother Bobby, OK? You forgot your, you forgot your hole. You forgot your hole. There you go. I'll forget your hole, whatever you do. Thank you. <laughs> OK, now, um, Bobby, I want a word with you. Because you are possibly one of the most disgusting little boys I've ever met in my life. <laughs> in as much as, I mean, you're not horrible. You've just got all the disgusting habits. You have thousands of them. Take us through your top three. Your top three have to be, uh, first of all, your finger. Go on, do your finger. To the camera. Look at that. OK. And, um, and your next one has got to be the nose. But please don't try that at home because he is a trained expert. And uh, now your belly's next. Go on. Get up. There we go. With the belly. <laughs> now, of course, there are, th there are th only three, three ways you can do that. You can only have three qualifications. First of all, you've got to be a little brat to want to do it. <laughs> Secondly, you've got to have the uh, muscular control to do it. But uh, thirdly, you've got to have a bit of a fat stomach. And <laughs> it has to be said, you are a bit of a lardy, aren't you? Yeah? <laughs> no. Does it worry? Because, I mean, you've not got a huge problem with it. Well, not that huge. But, but um, you are a bit overweight, aren't you? Yeah. Does that bother you at all? No. Do you think it might bother you when you get older and you want to pull the girls and all that? Yeah? So, are well, you going to do something about it, maybe? Yeah. How old are you now? Twelve. And uh, when, do you, when do you think you might start doing something about it? When I'm 13. When you're 13. And when's that? January the 28th. Well, that's just not soon enough, as far as we're concerned, because outside we have a fantastic gym teacher. And here is our gym teacher. <laughs> we... <laughs> Do you know who this is? OK, have you ever met him before in your life? No. OK, let me, uh, let me introduce you. This is Jim, our gym teacher. All right, Jim. Hi. Thanks for coming to the show. This is Lardy. All right. Yes, Shake yes. hands. OK. How's right, uh, take us through three quick exercises then, Jim, if you don't mind. Well, I think we need to get him to reach his arms up here. Come okay. on, get him up. Now, just reach full pull back there. Okay. Pull back. Bit of stretching first. Don't grimace. Don't grimace. That's it. OK, and down. And now let's pull back there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Now one my boys love to do. And we actually just reach down and touch your knees, but stick your bum out, right? Okay. There you go. Does that fit? Do you feel that hurting there? No. Well, you should be doing that. Let's get the back straight. Get the back straight. That's it. Now we've got it. Now we're really hurt him now. Let's, let's well, really let's hurt really him. hurt him. Let's lie down on that floor. Okay. Lie down. Come on, lie down. Come on, let's go. Right, bend your knees. Bend your knees. Bend your knees. Yep. Get your hands behind your head. Yep. Right, now put your head up here. And down. And again, that's two and three. OK, I will leave him Four. doing that uh, at 7.49. And by the way, these are the right, uh, right physical instructions because we phoned up Bobby's own gym teacher and, and this is what he needs to work on and he's going to continue this work on Monday when he gets back to school. But now, i just got to say, this is Channel 4, you're watching The Big Breakfast. Uh, they find that hobnobs are rock for... I think I've got to come out to you later. Okay. In the next hour, on The Big Breakfast... Oh, uh, yes, we've got the last part of the <laughs> oh. Girls Up interview with Nelson Mandela. Big Frank Bruno will be talking to Paula, and our psychics will be here telling us what's going to happen in the news next week. OK, today's People Report is about dog mess, uh, plus a, a brand new mess for you to guess, and our daily dose of uh, romance in Cupid's Arrow. Now, something very important I was going to say, and I completely forgot what it was. Oh, yeah, the Friday feeling. Yeah! We've got that, but only just for the next hour. <laughs> it's 8 o'clock now, and time for the news and the weather with Peter. That's why we've got all our uh, Union Jacks out. And uh, here's Paula's uh, coffee mate. This is one of her friends, and they're both in the Women's Institute together. Who's this she brought with you today? This is Pixie, who's Pixie. wearing her matching ensemble. Oh, she looks Like lovely. the Von Trapp family. Ooh, okay. Wave your flag. Oh. <laughs> okay, on the show today. On the show today, we've got Frank Bruno. Woo! Yay! And also, I'll be talking to Craig and Jane, our psychics, who will be giving us tomorrow's news today. Which we're very excited about. We'll be checking up uh, to see if they got uh, this week's news right flag. last week.
It's now uh, five minutes past eight. A question about two people in the photograph. But uh, first of all, we ask, where are, are you? they? Yeah. Was it from fish ponds? So you're making us a fish pond, very fish aptly. Pond, yeah. Okay, can you, and Lynn, the mother of the week, you, you've actually been helping out a bit as well, haven't mm -hmm. you? Could you talk us through what you've done? I mean, this is quite wonderful. It look, I just could we have a round of applause before we yeah. do anything else? Because I think it looks beautiful. Malky, can you talk us through it, please? Uh, yeah, well, the, the pond's gone in now. Yeah. Um, We've, we're just limited with time. We've used everything that was in the garden. We've used bricks up around there. Now, first of all, you had to dig it out, we, didn't you? We dug it out. We yeah. laid sand. We leveled it up so the water is level yeah. all the way around the pond rather than being tilted and looking silly. It's only a small pond, so we put a few marginals in and a big lily, which will obviously die back in the winter. And all yeah. that needs, all the leaves, when, when it dies down, it needs all pulling out. Just leave the roots because it'll be detrimental to the water. Actually, the, the tips right. you're giving us are because you're, you are an expert pond maker, aren't you? No, Doug? I'm not an expert. But you've made two, <laughs> we all make, haven't you? That's right, but we, make, we all make mistakes. No, I think this one's absolutely wonderful. But, so we uh, pull out the leaves for the winter. That's right. And now, how about um, the fish? Because that's the important part right. of the fish pond, I think. We've got six small fish. Yeah. Okay, but the first thing there's we seven. do. There's seven, is there? Oh, we just. Had a just, baby. Uh, just <laughs> sure it's yes. not the red herring. <laughs> um, <laughs> we've neutralised a bucket of water. Right. Okay, now this is quite important. Neutralised? We, we use a chemical. Well, it's a, it's, you can use crystals or you can use a, a, a solution and it kills the chlorine and all the chemicals in tap water. And is it but safe for the fish? It's safe. As soon as, that, soon as that's poured into the pond, that's neutralised and you can put the fish in. Right. If you don't, you will have problems. Now, is it okay for the fish in winter, though? Um, this time of year, you, you've got to just uh, feed very lightly right. because of the water temperature going down. Um, what happens if it, if it goes all icy? If it goes all icy, we can put a, a tennis ball. Well, you put the a tennis, tennis ball, ball in beforehand. A tennis ball in before, yeah. and it'll ice up to the ball. Yeah. And if you, it'll just be a little area around the ball where, where, which won't ice up. It lets the gases come up right. onto the bottom. We will remember all of this while we okay. have a wonderful pond. And uh, as you can see, the chapel <laughs> pond, it's going to be called. Um, Lynn, would you, do, would you do me the honour just there, over there? Absolutely wonderful. Big round of applause, please, yeah. for the chapels from yeah. Fish Ponds. And thank you very much for our Fish Pond. I know you've done a lot of work for this. Okay. You're watching Channel 4, and this is a big breakfast. I like croissants in the morning. Show, we have Neil Sadaka, Miranda Richardson, Ray Liotta. We say goodbye to the Chapel family. Oh. Bye, oh. Chapel family. Oh. Goodbye to Michael Jackson, who made a quick, exclusive stop over here at the Ow. big breakfast. Oh. Bye, Michael. OK, thank thanks you. for watching. Have a great weekend. Goodbye. In just a moment, you bet your life with Bill Cosby.
as you were, so I've got Larry Lamb here. Happy? Now can I worry about tomorrow's sun? That's a fair cop. Hmm? Very original. One of yours, Larry? <laughs> Pretty girl. Not all police women are ugly. Only the ones that give you parking tickets. You want to lift home? You know how many times you've asked me that? As many times as uh, Kim Novak has lovers. All right, all right. But it's not every month that Rupert Murdoch leaves me the company rolls. Mm. I could get used to it. But come round and have dinner with Muriel and me soon, huh? Thanks. I'll send the rolls. <laughs> What are you doing? Cancelling my membership to the Market Traders Association. You're getting out of Muriel. Oh, yes, well, we'll just have to go where is it? Oh, Muriel. Work. Mr. Alden, work. Oh, ah, yes. I want to get back. I mean, day after day, you know, it is tomorrow. Muriel? Well, come with us Muriel? Muriel? Oh, that's it. I'll keep the fingers crossed. Tell her. Muriel? Tell her. Muriel? Oh, I don't think I heard her say one way or another. Uh, I just imagine that she'd be back after Christmas. You call me down here at this time of the night to tell me about a missing person case. Not just any missing person, Gov. She's the wife of the deputy chairman of the News of the World, a Mrs. Muriel Mackay. Husband, Alec Mackay. How long has she been missing? Four hours. Four hours? She's probably gone for a walk. I know, I know, but the DS down there thought she might have been taken for a walk. Something not quite right. We don't have kidnappings in Britain. All the same. I think we should take a look at it, Gov. These are important people. Handle with care. Kid gloves. Even if she has done a runner. Mine is. Diane. Are you all right? Yeah. David, come on through where it's a bit quieter. Huh? as quick as we could. Bless you. Is there any news? No. Or was there a, a, a note? You mean a ransom? No. Just some twine and a meat cleaver. A meat cleaver? What did the police take? The police? I don't think the police have got a bloody clue. They're saying she went off on her own. She left the guard off the fire. She, she'd never do that. And there was a cup of tea undrunk by a chair. Blimey, it was... It was like the Marie Celeste. Where are the rest of the police? In the garden, crawling all over the bloody place. Dad? Why? Why your mum? What's she ever done? I want maximum publicity. I want her so hot to handle that whoever's got her will let her go. There are. Dangers in that, Alec. If this goes out over the wire, she'll be in every newspaper, every radio broadcast by breakfast. I don't care. Everybody. The BBC, everybody. What else am I supposed to do? Just sit here and be told she's having a midlife crisis? Ask my son-in-law. We know the power we have in the press, Larry. Let's use it. Okay. Look, Alec, you know I'm going to need a photograph.
She's only 55. You're Australians, aren't you? Perhaps she got homesick. My mother had no desire to go back to Australia. She's happy here. She's not the sort to just walk out. What would she be walking away from? All this, her home. What about her jewellery that's missing? All these things left lying around. She may have had some reason for going off on her own. My mother hasn't any enemies. She's happily married. We're a very happy... Alec Mackay speaking. This is Mafia Group 3. You're from America. We have your wife. You're going to need a million pounds by Wednesday, Mr. Mackay. Who is this? This is ridiculous. I haven't got anything like that amount of money, and I don't know anybody who has. Well, you had better have one million by Wednesday. I can't. Have you got my wife? We tried to get Rupert Murdoch's wife tonight, but could not. So we took yours. Rupert Murdoch? Now, all you do is you have to wait for the contact. And we will be contacting you on the Wednesday. Who the hell is this? The Mafia. Newspaper man, Mr. Smith. I've been with newspapers all my working life. They're my people. I trust them. I've been a policeman 22 years, Mr. Mackay. I don't share your confidence. What about the kidnap call? What are you doing about that? And why the bloody hell are your men taking our fingerprints? Because of this sort of thing. There is a possibility it could have been a hoax. When are you people ever going to take this thing seriously? She has been kidnapped. Now, the evidence for that is all over the place. Very late last night, the BBC reported that the wife of the deputy chairman of the News of the World disappeared under mysterious circumstances. That report came through the Press Association at 1 a.m. At a quarter past one, your so-called M3 kidnap call came through. Can we talk to you alone, please, Mr. Mackay? No. I don't want to fight you, Mr. Mackay. But the police solve mysteries, not that lot out there. Anyway, as it happens, I agree with you. She's been kidnapped, from all I've seen. Well, that's something. Thank you very much. Maybe I'm sticking my neck out. There's never been a kidnapping for ransom, you know, in this country. It's just not an English crime. Of course, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't consider all the possibilities. That's why I've got to get to know Muriel. Your life together, uh, everything. We came over here from Australia 12 years ago. Our son Ian's still out there. She loves this house. Loves entertaining. It's her home. She wouldn't leave of her own free will. Can't you trace calls? I'm afraid we can't, unless it comes through the operator. What did they mean? They, they tried to get Rupert Murdoch's wife. Well, you've been driving around in his roller while he's been away in Australia. They probably followed you one night and thought you were him. There's been a lot of publicity recently about his taking over the son, his money. 
I don't have his kind of money to pay a ransom. Very few of us do, Mr. Mackay. This voice on the telephone, can you tell me anything about it? Please, just let my mother come back. There's no reason why she should be taken. It must be a prank, because to ask a million pounds ransom is just incredible. My mother hasn't any enemies. She's happily married. We're a very happy family. Look, I'm not prepared to discuss the Evening Standard article. And now Mr. Mackay is not available to talk, and I'd be very grateful if you keep this line clear. Good night. Uh, Wimbledon, 2666. Hello? Uh, hello. Hello? Uh, this is uh, M. Tree speaking again. Yes. Your wife just posted a letter to you. Yes. Don't cooperate. I see. For heaven's sake, don't call the police. You have been everywhere. You have been gone. You have been followed. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that last part. Followed. Did you get the message? Yes. And the money? I'm sorry? Did you get the money? Content kept secret. Of course, from the press, from everybody. Understood? Right. We'll be around. Ever thought of clip ons, Gov? Mr. Smith! Mr. Smith! Can you give us any details about a letter we understand the sun's going to print tomorrow morning? What letter? Sir, Muriel. Sir. The one that says she's cold and blindfolded and can't keep going. Gentlemen, I suggest you recheck your sources. Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, does it prove that Mrs. Mackay's still alive? Mr. Smith, do you still believe Mrs. Mackay's still alive? Mr. Smith, sir, sir, just a little word. We understand Mr. this, yeah, yeah, I have been... I had nothing to do with it. We didn't leak it to the press. Why not question your man? They had strict instructions. Oh, come on, you know what happens. Coppers get together with the reporters down the pub, give them information. Not my men. Anybody's men. Just what are you doing anyway? My daughter is going through back copies of the paper, trying to find someone with a big enough grudge to do this to me. What are you doing? Trying to run an investigation without the press buzzing around my head like flies on shit. From the start, they've been there. Nothing happens without the press knowing. In American kidnap cases, the press is silenced from the start. Oh, fine. Yes, well, maybe then we better get the American police over here. Maybe then we get some progress. I'm sorry, uh, no quality than anybody else. It's been a long flight and I'm rather tired. Mr. Mackay, some people are saying your mother set this whole thing up herself and she might already be back in Australia. My mother isn't a dramatic person. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's been a long journey and I'd like to see my family. Most of us haven't slept for two nights. Usually with a case, you have somewhere to start. A stolen property, a body. I have nothing. Nothing but a team of highly professional men doing everything they can to find your wife. We're on the same side, for Christ's sake. Why, then, are we still being treated as suspects? Shut up! Smith's right. I'm sick to death of all this arguing. Mum's out there somewhere, and all we're doing is sitting here. Ian. Dad. 
What's going on? Is this strictly necessary? We've got to eat. The police as well. Like it or not, they're part of the furniture. I don't know how you can even think about it. Oh, hello, William. Doesn't it occur to you that I've got to keep busy? Yes, 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 I can. Thanks very much. I've never smoked like this before. Look at me. It's like we're hostages. Climbing over the garden wall to do our shopping. I'm worried about Dad. His health. We all are, Ian. <laughs> you try and find ten Chinamen in the middle of Wimbledon on a Sunday afternoon for a lineup. So I said to his solicitor, you go to China and get him. He went on, he never came back. I reckon he's still there. <laughs> Thanks. No, thanks. I don't see why this has to be a picnic. Hello? I'd like to speak to Diane, please. Diane speaking. How are you? I don't know who I'm speaking to. I'm very well, thank you. Try and remember the M3. I want to speak to your daddy. Well, he's not in very good health, I'm afraid. Well, where your mummy? Can I speak to her? I don't know where my mother is. I wish I knew. Do you have any idea? You've gone too far. It has gone too far now. Who's gone too far? Tell them they've gone to the police. We've gone too far in going to the police? you can, because unlike conventional liquids, new Purcell Micro dissolves fatty stains like greased lightning. This is where Jerry Hall splashed me with gravy. New Purcell Micro Liquid makes fatty marks a thing of the past. I know you can't see it now. What do we fancy for dinner tonight, then? Uh, something exciting. Fred, I need your help again. Quick, Fred. Mrs. Jackson needs something speedy and special. Don't worry. She's going for our sweet and sour. It'll only take a few minutes, and they'll love it. Hey, this looks a bit special for a Wednesday. I reckon she's been down the Chinese. And I reckon it's your night for the washing up, my lad. Home fried sauces in jars. Marvellous meals in minutes. Your Wales and West Rover dealers have a special announcement. Following Rover's price realignment, we can now save you up to £1,000 on a best-selling Rover 200. So for real value, come and see your Wales and West Rover dealers or call 0800 52 10 20. Trust me. 
are not swapping seats. Oh, really? Kids will do anything for the taste of Dairy Lee. Rock Chunk, a bloke big enough to eat chocolate by the slab. Then Christmas came early. <gasps> Howdy, boys. As Rock devoured a block, they pounced. An evil plot hatched. Give us your yolk, get up, they roared. Says who? He barked, chewing heroically. The mob defeated. Rock bit, hugely, and exploded emotionally. Whoa! Yorking, demolish it, chunk by chunk. The Avon Windows Part Exchange Deal gives you £100 for every window you replace. Dial 100. Ask for free phone Avon Windows. Well, I can think of better ways than spending the evening than a house sitting. Especially when it's haunted. Let go. Let go. A close encounter for Boone. Nine days now since Mrs. Mackay disappeared. Is it a fact that the police are no further forward now than they were then? Since that time, we have explored every avenue and will continue to do so. Isn't it also true that many of your superior officers at Scotland Yard don't even believe that she has been kidnapped? There are a lot of theories. I have no doubt that she has. How then do you explain the fact that there's been no word from the kidnappers for nearly a week? Perhaps, gentlemen, that is a question you should be addressing to your editors. Isn't the amount of money and time being spent on this case rather excessive? And isn't that because of the influence of the Mackay family? I'm not prepared to discuss the costs of the inquiry. Answer the question, please. I just have. Is it true that the police are really talking a lot of crystal balls and have now obtained the services of a Dutch clairvoyant? It is true that the services of a clairvoyant have been obtained, but by the family, not by the police. Isn't that a desperate measure? We are desperate. You a gardening man, Bill? I love the time. Don't have a garden. Muriel loves her garden. She loves watching things grow. Alec. She planted that azalea bush the week we moved here. Alec, what I've got to say isn't easy. You say it anyway. It's been seven days now without a word. If she was alive, they'd be in a hurry to get rid of her. Except she's dead. Is that what you're saying? I'm talking as a friend, Alec. Not just as a copper. Bill, the only thing I've got left is hope. Every crank who phones, every clairvoyant, at least has contact from someone. Don't ask me to abandon that. Wimbledon 2666, Alec Mackay speaking. Hello, Alec. This is the M3. We contact you concerning Muriel. Yes. Is she all right? She's very cooperative. She's all right, well taken care of. Well, she must have at least told you the truth, that in fact, I haven't got the money that you're talking about. Very worried. Well, how do you think I am? You're worried as well? Of course I'm worried. I want to get her back again. Look, you must... You must make a reasonable demand so that I can meet the situation. Can't you get her to write to me and give me some proof that she's still alive and well? I'll send you instructions what you've got to do if you want her back. Look, bring a gun here and shoot me rather than make unreasonable demands. Nobody's got a million pounds, and I mean, quite frankly, it's ridiculous to talk about it. You, you, you might as well give me ten years. You, you might as well just kill me now. God. Look, what have we done to deserve this?
good man your father, Ian. I like him, I like him a lot, but he's too emotional. We need someone else now to deal with them three, or we'll lose them. It'd probably be easier if there were the Mafia. They're madmen. We need someone to bring them out. We've got to start taking the upper hand. I can try. The last thing your mum and I ever spoke about was the dog spoiling the lawn. The last thing. Stupid. She is going to come home. She's going to walk through the door. Was it my fault? I, I thought the puppet said he would do good. You did what you thought was right. It was the only way I knew. If I've killed your mother... For God's sake, don't talk like that. We all, we all thought that maximum publicity would frighten them. We're a newspaper family, Dad. It was our way of dealing with things. It's me that's bloody frightened. Mine is here. Yeah, yeah, God, it does. It smells like another bloody oxen. Arrive in Ashley Court now. on, matey. You've a little talking to do to us now. Down at the station. May I speak to Alec, please? I'm sorry. He's in bed. Why? Because he's so drugged that he cannot speak to you. This is Ian Mackay. I am the spokesman, and that is all that matters. Well, then, if you want this deal to come through, if you want your mom, follow the instructions in the letter we shall send. The said place and the said time. Oh, why don't you give us some proof first? All we want from you is either yes or no. You intend to cooperate? Yes. Of course we intend to cooperate, but we want proof first. We want proof first. We want proof first. We want proof first. Well, look, you're not going to get any further more. Because you haven't got her. You've got a corpse. You've got a corpse. You've got a corpse. You've got a corpse. And we got her. You've got a dead person. You know she's not alive. So you're just trying to trick us. You're trying to trick us. You're trying to trick us. Get her to write out warm greetings to all my friends and relatives in her own handwriting. Or oh, oh, by tonight's evening standard and get her to write out the headlines and the date in full. We don't have to call The headlines on tonight's paper. The headlines on tonight's paper. The headlines on tonight's paper. And the date in full. And the date in full. And I'm going to hang up on you now. Goodbye. Be reasonable. Goodbye. <laughs>
ride. Now, the kidnappers' instructions are for Ian Mackay to go to a phone booth here on the corner of Cambridge Road and Church Street. Well, for obvious reasons, I'm not going to risk a member of the family, so one of our boys here will impersonate him. Now, if we can get the kidnappers to agree, he will use the roller, saying he's injured his arm and can't drive. This will allow John Minus to act as chauffeur. She is going to come home. She's going to walk through the door. My mother hasn't any enemies. She's happily married. We're a very happy family. speaking. This is cruiser falling trailer. Instructions are to proceed north up Cambridge Road to Southbury Road to await further instructions from M3. So she started with your suits. Well, all I did was have a little fling. With her sister, sir. Next, she came in here. Then she came in here and made herself some low fat Ovaltine light. Mug's still warm, sir. And seems to have seen the lighter side of things. <sighs> Thank goodness. <laughs> Oops. Better put the kettle on, Constable. Um, a pint of the uh, viper's tooth, please. The blunderbuss for me. I think the old grumble belly. Many real ales of names that let you know what you're getting. Mm -hmm. Definite bite. Nutty, but 
dexterously balanced. So what do you get from a real ale called flowers? All the sinuous subtlety of the viper's tooth. Plus the assertiveness of the blunderbuss. Yet minus the uncouth undertones of the old grumble belly. Flowers original. Don't be fooled by the name. It's a dog's life without good life. You may not want your children to watch this commercial for Chambossi real chocolate mousse because it contains scenes of sheer indulgence. Mmm, made with real chocolate, whipped into a truly delicious mousse. Far too good for the children. Chambossi real chocolate mousse. Shh. Just don't tell the children. Let's try one of the new Uncle Ben's curry sauces tonight. Mmm, got the chicken. Just add the mild, creamy korma sauce. Cook in the oven full of fragrant spices and delicious almonds. And serve with Uncle Ben's rice. Wonderful. Uncle Ben's. Perfect results every time. Murder. I'm in serious trouble here. I'm gonna get you a top man as my co-counsel. Who's that? It's Matlock. He's on HTV Wednesday at 9. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get him to stand down. It's like Bran's bloody hatch out there. We needed backup, Gov. Backup? 56 unmarked cars and 180 men. Back up, that was cock up. And if it had been the Mafia? Then they're probably having a bloody good laugh at our expense. Four of our motorcyclists trying to look like Hell's Angels, riding about like they were escorting the Queen Mother. No wonder those bastards didn't pick up the money. Cheers. I tell you, it wouldn't have surprised me to see one of our men sitting on top of the bloody case. You been to bed? No, I haven't been to bed. Been up all night working out. I'm going to explain it to the yard and the Mackays. I tell you, the press are going to have us for lunch. Well, one report of a car at the scene. Dark blue Volvo, 144, one side light not working, two people inside. Too dark to get a number. You might see if a similar car crops up somewhere in the files. all that money sitting out there for two hours and you didn't even touch it. You know I didn't even touch it? There are at least 20 cars. 20 cars. Did you know they're all police? What? Hmm? Around you? Who? Following you, Ian? No. I'm on my way to a meeting. This is a meeting now. Well, first, our business is being handled by the intellectuals. The heads. Then there is a meeting of the same intellectuals to be passed on to the third party, the rough, uh, ruffians we call them. Now, this meeting is in consideration with your mom. What time should be executed? Well, then you ought to appreciate I wouldn't double-cross you. 
I don't want to be responsible for my mother's death. Your mom pleaded with me. Please, please don't hurt me, she said. I'm very fond of your mom. You know I am. I'm very fond of her because she reminds me of my mom. It's gone too far, Ralph. It's gone too far. Say they'll execute mum. They're mad. I think the police have got Alec convinced she's dead already. You'd better talk to him, Ian. He's with me. I don't believe it. I don't bloody well believe it, Govan. The M3. They've been back in touch again with fresh ransom instructions. Does it sound genuine? Same voices. Right, no cock up this time. It'll be like taking milk from a baby. The greedy bastards. I've got a straightforward question here. I suppose that could be all right. Yes. You're right. The day will be tomorrow. You'd have to be down at Church Street. You shall be carrying the money in two briefcases this time. Two cases? Yes. Two small briefcases. They won't fit in the two small briefcases. They are two small suitcases. Remember, but remember, any error will be fatal. Two six double six, sorry. Yes, Wimbledon. Two six double six. Sorry, you've got the wrong number. Gentlemen, what can I do for you? Hmm? Some complaints about my dogs. Mr. Hossein? 
Mr. Arthur Ozane. police today raided the Hertfordshire farm of Arthur and Nizamuddin, N-I-Z-A-M-O-D-E-E-N, Hossein, two Trinidadian brothers in... Come on! What's off? No, no, nothing. No, do um, Brothers in connection with the mystery disappearance of Muriel Mackay over 40 days ago. New paragraph. The two have now been taken from Stocking Pelham to Kingston Police Station for questioning, full stop. Well, I'm very popular with the local people, Mr. Smith. I'll ask any of them. We have, Arthur. I intend to join the local council and the Pockeridge Hunt. Mr. Hossein. All you need, you see, is to be an English country gentleman and a snob. <laughs> and I am a snob. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to admit it. You need money to be a snob, Arthur. Like a million pounds. My father is a wealthy man in Trinidad. Very holy. Very important. Tell me about Nizam. Well, he came here last year on a visitor's permit. Works on the farm feeds the livestock. Now, what is it you want to talk to me about, Mr. Smith? Where were you on the day she disappeared, Miss Emma? Where did Arthur say I was? I want you to tell me where you were. It was the Monday after Christmas. I, I was with my brother Arthur. Did you go to Wimbledon between 5.30 p.m. and 7.45 in the evening? Wrong. I want to die. Let me die. Arthur killed me. He beats me. This was found on the farm. The barrels have been shot. Can you tell me why? <laughs> you only did shot me. and Arthur. Why did you? Have you ever used this before? Have you ever seen this before? I'll answer yes or no. Is that the one you use, Chapel Cut? Eh? What do you say? It's like the one we use to chop up a calf. What happened to the calf? We fed it to the pigs. And does this belong to you? Oh, let me die. Let me die. Why don't I die? She must be somewhere. Do you know what I think? What? I read a story once about pigs. How oh, they had a whole corpse. And all that was left was the large bones. Oh, no. Not even Arthur would have the stomach for that. Maybe not. It was a bloody good story, though. It is a good story. Yeah? Yeah, come on, let's have a pint.
How can they say those things? And where do they get all those stories from? You're a newspaper man, Mr. Mackay. They're your people. You trust them. That's not a very clever thing to say. Do you know where she is? I have never touched any of these things. You are just trying to trick me, Mr. Smith. I am not trying to trick you. I'm merely giving you a chance to give me an explanation. What's wrong? What's the matter with you? I've been in my forest. What for? All oh, these questions, Mr. Smith. I'm feeling unwell, you see. Do you want to see a doctor? No. No, I get headaches. I'll be all right. What did you do with Mrs. Mackay? Well, I want to help you all I can. I feel genuinely sorry for you, Mr. Smith, but I'm sorry I can't help you there. <sighs> you have a very difficult case, Mr. Smith. I can't help you. I'm sorry. It's a very, uh, <laughs> difficult case. Join Roger Cook as he enters the war zone to confront this Serbian. To some a hero, to others a criminal guilty of war crimes. For the Croats, for the fascists, I am a war criminal, and I don't give a damn how they call me. Misery, destruction, death are his trademarks. This Cook Report special confronts the criminal responsible. Tuesday controversy at 7.30 on ITV. Back to tonight now, and over on Channel 4 next, there's bittersweet comedy with nurses. While here on HTV West, in just a few minutes, we join News at 10. We put Duracell into one toy, ordinary SP batteries into the others. After a few hours of continual use, the ordinary batteries have played out. But Duracell keeps going and going and going, lasting up to six times longer. Duracell. No ordinary battery looks like it or lasts like it. Dad, you like bubbles, don't you, Dad? Yeah. Good, because I found some over here, 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 here. Aero. Oh, lovely bubbly. <laughs> what is it, you adults? You insist I drink this milk stuff every day. The only time I see you have it is in coffee. I mean, this stuff's delicious. I love it. 
man. Just look what great shape I'm in. Whoa! You know, I grew almost an inch last month. I'll tell you, I think you adults must be a couple of blocks short of a building set. Oh, speaking of which. Are you good little boysy boysy gone and drunk all your milky milky? Oh, now, come on. I mean, is that really the behaviour of a normal human being? It ain't just kid stuff. Romance is more than a feeling. It's a gift at only £14.95. Anaïs, Anaïs by Parfum Cacharel. Following the news, we continue our mini-series about the life of a young Jewish girl. Stephanie Powers stars in Mistral's Daughter tonight at 10.40. This is HTV West. We join Alistair Stewart and Carol Barnes at the ITN studios for news at 10. Dan Ayers bust, British Airways rescue will cost 1,600 jobs. Health workers launch campaign against London hospital closures. No Daily Mirror tomorrow as unions claim a right-wing coup. Two jailed in French aid scandal, protesters blame government. And El Alamein, 50th anniversary of Churchill's wartime turning point. Good evening. Dan Air, the British charter airline, has folded, the latest victim of the recession. But it's been saved from collapse by a British Airways takeover. The price, however, is high. 1,600 jobs will go, and the company's name and charter operations will cease to exist. Passengers with Dan Air tickets will still be able to fly. Dan Air, Britain's second biggest airline, was badly hit by the downturn in the package holiday market. Talks with Richard Branson's Virgin Atlantic about a merger failed earlier this month. Virgin and other UK airlines are against the BA deal. There's talk tonight about a reference to the Mergers and Monopolies Commission. Dan Ayres chairman described today how rescuing the company had become a yearly event. But this year, losses of £24 million in the first six months proved too much. The deal with British Airways will see the number of destinations served by Dan Air cut from 28 to 12 and two-thirds of its aircraft sold. It could have been much worse. I believe it is highly likely that Dan Air would have been forced to cease flying this morning without the assurance that this transaction was available to the company. Dan Air was founded in 1953, offering flights from South End to Manchester. It was perfectly poised to take advantage of the post-war expansion in civil aviation. Though dogged by an unreliable image and Dan Dare nickname, the airline grew to operate more than 50 aircraft at the height of its fortunes. Those fortunes reached their lowest ebb today, with British Airways paying £35 million to write off Dan Air's debts. Nice, nice smiles, gentlemen, nice smiles. Despite the smiles and handshakes, most of Dan Air's staff will lose their jobs. Those that remain face a pay cut. BA was unrepentant. The deal that they have at midnight tonight, young man, is no job and no deal. We're not taking advantage of that. What we're saying is there will be new uh, employment offered in the new company at uh, proper terms. British Airways has developed an appetite for taking over other airlines. In 1988, it won a titanic battle for British Caledonian, absorbed at a cost of £250 million. More recently, it was the turn of the French regional airline TAT to become part of the British Empire. BA also wants to take a share in the American carrier US Air, though that faces a delay. Today's takeover of Dan Air means the disappearance of the UK's second biggest airline. Remaining carriers like British Midland want the Dan Air bid investigated by the Monopolies Commission and the European authorities. Lower fares and a higher standard of service to the consumer has arisen in British civil aviation by the government maintaining a multi-airline policy. That's not allowing one particular airline to become hugely dominant against all the other people in the market. Now, any, uh, any move which concentrates 
uh, the dominance of British Airways must be strongly resisted. Virgin Atlantic is taking a different approach to BA's growing dominance and today applied for licenses to fly to Paris and Brussels from Heathrow and Gatwick. What we've decided to do is set up Virgin European Airways and try to lobby to get enough slots to actually get up and, and, and give British Airways some competition. At Gatwick today, Dan Air flights were operating normally. All commitments to scheduled and charter passengers will be honoured. It's thought the British Airways bid is unlikely to be blocked by the UK competition authorities, but 1,600 jobs and the Dan Air name will still disappear. Now it's the nurses who are outraged, as the miners were last week at plans for closures and redundancies. Their protest began today at the news conference announcing proposals to shut five top London hospitals as part of a wholesale reform of the health service in the capital. The health secretary, Mrs Bottomley, says there are too many hospitals in London with too many beds. Sir Bernard Tomlinson's much-leaked report was expected to provoke a strong reaction, and it did. A news conference in Westminster was disrupted as two nurses made a noisy protest. Sir Bernard waited patiently while officials ushered the nurses from the room. Afterwards, he said opposition to such a radical shake-up was inevitable. There's never a right time, because it will always be opposed, of course, by people who feel, some who feel genuinely that it's wrong, and some who feel that their own interests are threatened. Among those feeling threatened today, these newly qualified nurses at St. Bartholomew's. It has a worldwide reputation for training, the class of 92 could be the last. I think it's a brilliant hospital. I think it's an excellent training school. And it's very, very sad it has to go. We're just not going to get a job probably at the end of it. And it's very, very sad. The unions and hospital administrators say 20,000 health workers, including hundreds of doctors and nurses, will be put out of work by the closures. This is really the health service equivalent of the pit closure programme. And people now, I think, realise that the government isn't infallible. It makes mistakes. And if it's resisted, then we're confident that we can turn around this decision to close parts. But Tomlinson says many health workers would be redeployed in community care centres like this, which can do much of the routine work now done in hospitals at a fraction of the cost. The money saved by closing the hospitals would enable many more of these to be built. Despite the international reputation which London's teaching hospitals have gained as centres of excellence, the capital has the poorest GP and community health service in the country. At the moment, we spend a fifth more per head on acute care in London than anywhere else. It doesn't make sense. Nearly twice as many consultants, very many more beds. But the service isn't as good as it should be. But despite welcoming the report, the Department of Health says no decision will be taken on closures until early next year. It's not just job losses which could pose a big problem for the government. The Tomlinson report says that before there are any closures, there must be a massive injection of cash into GP and community care services to make sure they can cope with the extra work. The Department of Health will have to fight for extra cash during the toughest public spending squeeze for years. Harry Smith, News at 10, Central London. The row over Europe in the Conservative Party just won't go away. The Prime Minister in Cairo tonight is refusing to be scared off by backbench opposition to the Maastricht Treaty. In fact, he's planning to get discussion of the bill underway well before Christmas to show the rebels he's not afraid. John Major left London for a remembrance service at El Alamein, determined to bring the Maastricht Treaty back to the Commons in November, with rebellion flaring once more in his party. At its head, Lord Tebbit, who told John Major sovereignty was more important than who led the party. Maastricht is more important than any individual. And therefore, whether the Prime Minister um, would resign or not is not material in the terms of the debate. Mr Major, who met the committee representing backbenchers two days ago, last night had another frank exchange of views with the chairman of that committee. One member of the committee tells him, forget the bill. The government should concentrate on the re economic revival of this country. That's what my people want and that's what the country wants. Was, and Maastricht for that at the present time is irrelevant. It was left to the Prime Minister's lieutenants today discussing the equally divisive issue of public spending cuts to answer those challenges and to stress that it was the Prime Minister's credibility at stake. You can't have the Prime Minister going along to the summit that's forthcoming at Edinburgh saying to the other colleagues that uh, the uh, government's wholly committed to the Maastricht Treaty. We are, of course, going to ratify 
Uh, but actually, we've uh, promised the 1922 committee, or we've promised the House of Commons, that for some reason we won't start it until after Christmas. So his credibility demands that he delivers what this country authorised him in a general election, what the Cabinet supported him, what the House of Commons voted for, which is that we make progress with the Maastricht Treaty. Tonight, as John Major flew out of Heathrow, aides were talking of a Prime Minister in fighting mood, determined to show that he was not frightened of this issue or of the rebels. He landed in Egypt a short while ago with more than just historic battles in mind, but a fight for his political life. He is prepared to stake his future on the Maastricht Bill. There'll probably be no Daily Mirror tomorrow, not if the journalists there get their way. They're angry about what they think is a right-wing takeover of the traditionally pro-Labour newspaper. Tonight, they're occupying the paper's headquarters in London. Within the last hour, furious Daily Mirror staff issued a set of demands, including the reversal of the appointment of new chief executive David Montgomery, former editor of Today newspaper, no job cuts, no change in the newspaper's left-wing stance, and no editorial interference. Columnist Joe Haynes, former press secretary to Harold Wilson, has resigned over the appointment of the new management team. The banks and the, their stooges will want to make much higher profits in order to fatten it up to sell it off next year. And then, of course, we may well lose part of the tradition that the mirror the political tradition the mirror's always represented. David Montgomery, who declined to be interviewed this evening, put out a statement instead, saying there'd be no change in the mirror's political stance and that he hasn't gone there to make redundancies. But that wasn't enough to quell the revolt. The outrage and feeling of anger and disgust is absolutely uh, indescribable. I mean, people are, can't believe what's happened here. The mirror journalists plan to stay here all night and they say their action may continue tomorrow. If it does, that would threaten the Sunday Mirror and the Sunday people. Glano Glaser, News at 10 at the Daily Mirror. Chris Patton's first visit to China as governor of Hong Kong has not been a happy one. Beijing is furious with Mr Patton's plans to introduce greater democracy to the colony before it becomes a part of communist China in 1997. It's threatening to reverse any new reforms and it also wants to put a stop to the £10 billion Hong Kong airport project. Mr. Patton ended his fruitless trip to Beijing today with a tour of the Forbidden City, home to China's ancient emperors. But it was the men who now rule communist China who were to launch a scathing attack on Mr. Patton and his plans for broadening democracy in Hong Kong. After two days of tense talks, China's top man on Hong Kong affairs, Mr. Liu Ping, accused Mr. Patton of a lack of sincerity and said violating existing agreements could lead to turmoil. He said that if Mr. Patton carried out his plans without Chinese approval, Beijing would simply reverse them after the handover in five years' time. And if the planned airport went ahead without Chinese consent, there'd be trouble. China would not honor debts or contracts come the handover, and Chinese airspace would be closed to flights to and from the new airport. Tonight, at a dinner back in Hong Kong, Mr. Patton responded. He said he was trying to negotiate with China in good faith, but was getting nowhere. Nothing I've said is uh, encouraging social turmoil. What uh, some people may be trying to do in the next few weeks and months is precisely that. It's easier to discuss proposals um, with people who don't just criticize, um, but with people who will put alternatives forward. Uh, I do hope the Chinese government can get more calm down that is to listen to the popular opinion of people in Hong Kong. China's denunciation of Mr. Patton has dramatically upped the stakes in the struggle for Hong Kong's political future. Mr. Patton says he now needs the support of the colony's people if he's to maintain his stand against China. Mark Austin, News at 10, Hong Kong. Coming next on News at 10, the scandal in France over AIDS-inflected blood transfusions saw two doctors jailed today. The French boy condemned to death by the AIDS blood transfusion scandal. Why West Country fishermen hijack a ferry in Plymouth Harbour. And what one mining community makes of it all at the end of the week that was. Gently heat one tablespoon of Sainsbury's olive oil in a saucepan. Now cut six rashers of bacon into strips and add to the pan with one clove of crushed garlic. 
Cook for five minutes, stirring occasionally. Meanwhile, take a pack of Sainsbury's fresh egg tagliatelle and cook in salted boiling water for six minutes. Drain and then add to the bacon and garlic. Now mix half a jar of Sainsbury's green pesto with half a small carton of double cream. Add to the pan with some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Season, mix gently and cook for one or two minutes more. Transfer to a warmed serving dish, garnish with basil and pitted black olives and serve immediately. Aren't I wonderful? Sainsbury's, everyone's favorite ingredient. <laughs> Daddy, what keeps Mummy's hand so soft? Bubbles. <laughs> at the Allied Autumn Sale, there's over 1,000 carpets with at least 25% off. Many of which are half price. The Allied Autumn Sale. Extra sale savings for seven days. We saved £100 on the same holiday as our friends. By booking at Lund Polly. Ah, oh, get away. <laughs> if you enjoy the pleasure of wine, you'll find that this is one of the easiest ways of getting into it. And this is another. Thresher Wine Shops. We'll help you get more out of a bottle of wine. Oakwood. For a day brimful of action. A day of laughing, sharing, caring, daring. And there's always something new. Pay once at the gate, and all the main rides and attractions are free. Yes, sirree. Nutty Jake here, saying there's adventure, fantasy, and fun for everyone. So much to do, you'll just have to come back again. <laughs> and it's so easy to get to us. Oakwood, Wales is number one for family fun. Texas Tom gives you more, like free five pounds Marks and Spencer vouchers for every 25 pounds you spend, kitchens excluded, at Texas now. French haemophiliacs who contracted the AIDS virus from contaminated blood supplies say the real culprits have got away with it. They want three former cabinet ministers to be charged in connection with the country's worst health scandal. More than 250 haemophiliacs have already died after receiving infected blood. Today, the former head of the National Blood Transfusion Service was sentenced to four years in prison. Another official, now based in Cambridge, was also given four years with two suspended. He's 13, he's a haemophiliac, he has AIDS. So did his brother, who died a few months ago. Both were treated with contaminated blood in 1985. What do you think of justice, he was asked. Meaningless, he said. <laughs> justice, the murderer, said this woman, whose son is dying from AIDS. She and others felt the sentences passed today on the four doctors were too lenient. This man, the former head of the National Blood Transfusion Center, was given four years in prison. He and his colleagues allegedly permitted blood they knew to be contaminated with HIV to be passed on to haemophiliacs. But the demonstrators outside court today, many with mock blood bags, are pointing the finger at ministers as well as doctors. Ministers who, it's claimed, knew about the dangers of contaminated blood, but failed to act. Former Prime Minister Laurent Fabius was called as a witness in the trial, but he denied any responsibility. This defendant feels he's been made a scapegoat. Now a professor working at Cambridge University, he's also head of blood transfusion at Addenbrooke's Hospital. He faces two years in prison, but he's been allowed to go free until his appeal can be heard.
I will be uh, completely exonerated because I am innocent, I have done all I could, and that's the facts. Professor Alain says he'll stand down temporarily from his positions at Cambridge to allow a committee of professional experts to examine the evidence against him. Here, there'll be appeals against today's judgment, both from defendants and victims, who say the sentences should be longer. The French blood contamination affair is far from over. UPM News at 10, Paris. Here, two families who believe the Sellafield nuclear plant caused their children's cancers are going to court next week to try to prove it. Both families live near the plant in Cumbria, and the children's fathers worked there. Vivian Hope is one of the first two leukaemia victims to sue British Nuclear Fuels. She claims her father, a fitter at Sellafield, received doses of radiation that damaged his sperm and caused her leukaemia. Four years ago, she was given a 50-50 chance of survival. I had to learn to walk again. Started off in a wheelchair, then progressed to elbow crutches. I've lost out on two years of my life because of this illness. Family lawyers say they're sure they can prove the link between Sellafield and leukaemia in children, like Dorothy Ray, who died of the disease aged 10 months. Her father, too, worked at Sellafield. There is a lot of children after us that uh, the parents are coming fighting for them. But British Nuclear Fuels says since the first report linking Sellafield and children's cancer, other scientific research shows no connection. The NFL operations are not causing these leukemias. There will be uh, expert testimony from many uh, expert witnesses uh, with international reputations which support our view. As van loads of documents were unloaded at the High Court today, lawyers say the case to be heard by Mr Justice French will be one of the longest and most crucial in legal history. Fifty expert witnesses will try to decide the scientific oh. evidence. At stake is not only compensation for the families involved, but also the reputation and future of the nuclear industry. Other news, the Queen faced more protests on the final day of her visit to Germany. Protesters booed, jeered and held up banners supporting the IRA as the Queen toured the former East German town of Potsdam. Yesterday, eggs were thrown at the Queen when she visited Dresden. An armada of trawlers brought a cross-channel ferry to a halt today as fishermen blockaded Plymouth Harbour in protest at plans to limit the time they spend at sea. The government says the new laws will protect fish stocks. And the miners' leader, Arthur Scargill, has challenged the president of the Board of Trade, Michael Heseltine, to debate pit closures with him face to face. Mr Scargill also called for free coal to be given to pensioners. And it's been quite a week for Mr Scargill and, of course, the rest of the mining industry. They'll be taking stock this weekend in pit villages across the country. For tonight's special report, we've been to Billsthorpe Colliery in Nottingham, one of the 21 given a temporary reprieve. Julian Mannion spent the week with Billsthorpe miners and their families, who hope to save their pit and their village. Think of a world without any flowers. Think of a world without any trees. Think of the sky without any sunshine. Think of the air without any trees. At Billsthorpe Church, a special children's service but events at the pit, where many of the fathers work, overshadow the Thanksgiving. We've invented a, a few words now since the prospect of the pit closing, and that was think of a world without any pit, think of a world without any coal. One man who's determined to keep the pit alive is the colliery manager, Bob Robson. Since closure was announced, then suspended, he's fought to lift his men's morale. The morale's rock bottom. I don't think they've got over the shock yet. They're full of mistrust. And I think a bit of good news is that we're told, well, come on, you're going to have a chance. Well, then I think we'll just go, we'll just explode. The minute this pit are unbelievable. If we were going to war and I was the major, they would be my army. It is an underground army that is now staring defeat in the face. Even as the coal poured out this week, Billsthorpe went down as one of the 21 pits whose sentence of death will be the subject of government review. The men had real reasons to fear the worst. This face is currently...